Hey, welcome back everyone. Rob here from Ram Studio Comics. So trying to uh, make sure that I've got a good live stream uh, set up here. I've made some changes based upon our last couple and I figured we could either do, uh, you know, one of two things or three things, I guess, that we could ink on uh, this panel or I'll ink on this panel and answer any questions you have uh, and or we could draw some stuff, whatever. I've got a couple panels that we could look at. Uh, I thought it would be kind of funny too to even go through this one show you how bad the initial sketch is and show you how I'd work up from there to get something closer to you know what I end up inking that's something like this uh, but first off I, I made some changes to my setup so we had a couple live streams and they were less than desirable and um, so I just want you guys to let me know how's everything coming through uh, I do actually have a an ethernet cable plugged into my system now so hopefully that means more reliability I even up the speed for my service provider uh, because it was just so embarrassing that we we're trying to live stream and uh, yeah wasn't working too well so let me know what you guys think it's all good you can hear me sweet all right let me say hello to a few people I appreciate you uh, you guys showing up I really appreciate the repeat names that I see like icon you're here again hello thank you so much for that Sanon studios I've seen you before thank you uh tubs dubs i don't know i think i've seen that that's a awesome name by the way uh michael uh i'll probably slaughter this forgive me okafor um but yeah so it's it's good to see some uh some repeat uh viewers i, I really appreciate that uh yeah it's just just quite an honor to to have some people that you know actually show up for the stream um so yeah so you guys let me know where you want to take this we can start inking this panel uh we can ink any one of these panels I'll be honest, I drew some of these a while ago and I'm wanting to rework them, but I have to avoid that urge because, um, you know, I, if I take breaks too long in between these pages, doing other work, other things, and then I come back and I want to rework it, the book will never get done, right? So I have to just suck it up and say, hey, if I throw some inks on it, maybe I can fix some things that I'm not liking that way. And um, yeah, so keep pressing forward. Yeah, so any suggestions from you guys? What would you like to see? I, until you give me some, I'll just uh, I'll work on this a little bit so I'm at least being productive. Uh, so, and you guys, let me know if you you know if you got specific questions. Do you want me to answer? Cool. We'll just go from there. Hey, Keeman uh, Money Arts, good to see you as well. And then Icon, will you do uh, a live stream with David Finch again? Yeah, you know, I'm sure we'll try to put something like that together. I talk to him every now and then. Uh, he's a great guy. He's he's super busy. You know, he's it's amazing the amount of content he puts out on YouTube and, uh, and still is knocking out comic work like a madman. So uh, definitely be open for that. I'll mention it to him when I talk to him again. Uh, but I try not to pressure him just because... You know, it amazes me how he can even keep up with everything. Uh, I know how much work it is just, you know, doing the courses in the YouTube channel and my own projects, um, you know, my own comic here and there. Uh, but, yeah, I'm not working on a uh, a series of covers at any given time. So, yeah, it's, it's amazing. But I think that's kind of the neat thing about challenging yourself as an artist and, and getting better and better and faster and faster. Uh, you know, you do get to where you can take on uh, a lot of things, but uh, yeah, he's on a whole nother level as far as that goes. Uh, Torniki uh, Kambunia, I can't say it last and so, last part. Sorry. Uh, hi, Robert. Do you normally go live often? You know, I don't. I want to try to start making more of a habit of it. Uh, that's why today, uh, you know, is really kind of a, another. I hate to say it's another test run because I keep saying test runs, but uh, I'm just trying to get all the settings really solid you know so i'm hoping with running a um, a better connection to my computer that we'll have a good uh, turnout today we, you know a nice good stream health and uh because it's really distracting you know it's already you know something where i'm trying to like look over read some comments do some drawing hopefully bring content that that is uh informative and fun uh and answer questions the last thing i need is for the stream health to go Kaput, you know, it just it just it's another distraction we don't need. 
What's the latest book that I've read? Huh. What is the latest book that I've read? I would have to say series wise. I've been doing a lot more series like uh, Batman Who Laughs. I finally picked that up. Um, you know what I've been doing too is I, I like looking at the uh, the stories that, that uh, go along with the games. So I've been playing certain games and then I'll, I'll say, oh, that looks like one of the stories. You know, they're all kind of remakes of each other, right? Or, you know, I think all of them are books first, right? And then they just adopt them to the games or adapt them to the games. But uh, that's been pretty interesting. I've been doing a little bit of that, like, you know, checking the, uh, the book titles after playing the game or something. It's kind of fun. Um, I noticed that a lot more with DC stuff, so... But yeah, Batman, I've been I've been reading more DC. You know, it's so weird too because I grew up as such a hardcore Marvel fan. Um, which I still am. I mean, I'm I'm more of a Marvel Marvel fan, but uh but I I've I've done a lot more DC product. I've played a lot more DC games lately. I'm playing Batman um uh, Arkham Knight. It's cool. It started off a bit slow, but I think it's a pretty good game. Um some of the visual effects are pretty stunning. You know, I don't think anything really competes with um, Spider-Man. I haven't played the new one yet, but the last one, I've uh, been through that twice now. And uh, yeah, they really knocked that all out of the ballpark. And I imagine the new one's even better, so I got to get a hold of that. I was kind of waiting to see if I was going to get the PS5, but I don't know. I still like my PS4. hate to waste some money when it's. I'm still pretty happy with what I got. But yeah, back to the DC thing. Like, I've been picking up a lot more DC stuff. And I love their animated series. All the Batman stuff. And, it, you know, it's just good stuff. So, good food uh, for the brain, for imaginative works of art, I think. Yeah, and Justice 2. I've been, I've been watching a lot of the videos. And i got to stop because I haven't got the game yet. And it's like I've pretty much watched a lot of major clips on it. Um, yeah, so you're recommending that? You're really liking Justice 2? And see, now that's that's one where I read the uh, the comics for, you know, I definitely picked up the comic storyline on that first. Because what, what was that? That was the, uh, I can't keep up with all the titles. Was that, was that Gods Among Us or something like that? Or, yeah, it was one of those. But just great stuff. I mean, just to be able to sit there and um, play these, these characters... Some of these games are getting really flipping good. Like, you know, I'm I'm an old school gamer. Like, I came up on Atari. You know, like I mean, not really. I was really little, but that was my first gaming experience. And so I've seen all the bad games throughout the years, but loved every minute of it because the interactivity and you know, it's still it's still awesome. But now looking at it comparatively and what they do visually with these games, it, it's hard to look back and see what I played. You know, the, the games that I thought were cool. I uh, like the old Tekkens. I used to love, I mean, I still love Tekken, but uh, I used to love those uh, cinematics. And I look at them now and I'm like, wow, they are so bad compared to what they do today. The cinematics are freaking just breathtaking. Yeah, and Tub Dubs, I'm a DC guy myself, but usually like to read classics. Yeah, and I feel like since I have been a Marvel fan for so long, it was, you know, obviously time that I started to read more DC. You know, it just kind of, I think, happens naturally because you got to mix it up. You got to, and it's hard not to love, you know. I mean, it's really weird. I think overall, Marvel has a lot of the, the bigger characters that I'm a fan of. But then, you know, DC's got Superman, Batman. I mean, those two alone are just such heavy hitters and, and like the most iconic really I mean so so I have to like you know it's it's kind of hard not to want to read some of that um I just wish they'd do a little bit better on their movies it, it just really bugs me but whatever I'm still a fan I'm still gonna watch the Snyder Cut even though you know I was really disappointed with what they did originally I didn't follow as much into it like a lot of people you know reading up all the reasons why things went south on that deal um because you know I, I have a hard time buying into that because it's always like hey let's promote the movie this is going to be the best 
superhero movie you've ever laid eyes on. Uh, let, you know, get everybody to watch it, and then all of a sudden it comes out, doesn't do well on, on Rotten Tomatoes or whatever. And then they're like, oh, here's the reasons why. I'm like, no, no, no. Why didn't you, you would have you would have said there was problems before you, the reasons why it came up because it didn't do well, you know. So I don't, I don't know, I don't buy into all that a whole lot. But I imagine there are some significant things that happened, as as with any huge massive projects, there's going to be problems. Too many moving parts, you know. Too many, uh, too many people that uh, got to be part of that massive project that something's going to go wrong. But who else is uh, excited for the Snyder Cut? Uh, yeah, I'm trying to read the comments. I see people asking, are you reading the comments? Uh, I stopped playing games. Uh, this is Icon. I stopped playing games three years ago because they're not teaching you anything. And you broke your eyes too. And you broke your eyes too. Yeah, I mean, they, they don't they don't teach you a lot. I mean, they're definitely entertainment, but... You know, I, I do feel that the visually striking imagery is, is good in some way. I, maybe, maybe it's just me. We're all very different. Might not work for you. But I do take uh, clips. You know, I'll even if I see a really striking pose or striking uh, composition, I'll stop and I'll hurry up and grab my phone, uh, hopefully before the screen changes or before I move the character in the wrong way, and I'll take a picture of it. Uh, and then I'll reference it later, at least do a quick sketch. I think that does help for understanding composition and things like that um, because it's so well done in that 3D environment that you really can grab some good information from it. So I, I try to think of it like that uh, and I do limit the time that I play. I, I, you know, back in the day, I played absorbent amounts of time. I mean, like, you know, I would, I would just play all day long if I could. And so... I definitely got away from that. Like I play a couple hours here and there, like maybe an hour a night. Sometimes I skip some nights and I do a couple hours. On a weekend I might do a four or five hour deal, you know, so I don't play like I used to. And there was times back in the day I'd wake up and play games and then be like, oh, I got to order pizza. I haven't ate today. You know, like that definitely has happened. But, um, you know, it's not like that anymore. I got too many responsibilities, got a family to provide for. The guilt starts to, to set in, basically. Or guilt, responsibility set in. My conscience. Alright. So I'm just doing this. I guess I can do... Let me see if I got any of these fills correct. I like to draw a little line across. And then see if... Uh, see if I missed any areas. I usually always do. It's pretty bad. Oh, not too bad that time. Uh, but yeah, let me read some of these questions. I know I'm just kind of rambling here. That's what I do. All right, I am Dredd. I'm pretty excited for the Snyder Cut, but I'm more excited for the Batman. Yeah, yeah. I mean, based on the trailer, I really, I, I'm digging the Batman. And I'd be honest, I was a skeptic. I didn't think Robert Patterson, Pattinson, Patterson, Patty Cake. Just, I didn't think he could really fit those shoes, but... I don't know. It's looking pretty cool, and and I do like that they're going what seems like more of a a broken Bruce Wayne, you know? Because I mean, come on, he'd be so traumatized. It is kind of hard to believe that in a lot of the instances he's so well put together and so polished. I know that's a a um, that's one of his costumes. I get that. Like probably Batman is more his real self, and Bruce Wayne is a costume. But you know, or, or the um, see, you know, the identity or whatever the. What is it, secret? No, that would be the secret identity. Anyways, but I'm I'm pretty excited for how well that that um, trailer looks. But the only bad thing is I've been misled before. I've thought a trailer looked really great, and then all of a sudden, wow, that was the extent of that great movie packed into that trailer. So I hope it's not one of those. We'll just have to see. All right, so. What else? Samuel Jones, please don't blast us with smiley faces. I was trying to read those comments, dude. But I appreciate all the smileys. At least they're not angry faces. Uh, let's see. Oh, somebody just said, okay, bye. <laughs> all right, bye. Glad you could make it. 
I just want more Constantine. Yeah, that's that was a pretty cool movie. Or book series too, right? My bad. I guess I don't follow that one enough. I did like the movie though. Par uh, parts. I, that's that one is for me is it's still great. It just doesn't. It, you know those ones you go back and rewatch. You're like, wow, that was a lot cooler the first time. I did experience a little bit of that. Oh come on, dude! I don't want to have to ban you. Quit with the smiley faces, or I'm kicking you. I'm trying to read these. All right, uh, FPS games, really dynamic games. All right, you guys are just talking amongst yourselves. All right, I didn't see any more questions, so. If you guys don't have any suggestions or questions, I'm just going to keep inking on this. Sound good? And forgive me if I don't read some of the comments. I uh, probably do need to use a moderator at some point. I just um, never really know when I'm going live. i got to get on to a, uh, an actual schedule here. Do Spider-Man in the background. <laughs> Is that what you guys want? You guys rather I stop doing this and draw Spider-Man? I'm game for whatever. Um, and also, if you guys let me know, like, um, you know, if you do get any lag, or I'm just, I really, I'm really hoping the changes I made keep the stream um, a lot better than the last time. So let me know. All right, fill this in. Yeah, so will we be doing another live stream where we correct your drawings, do drawovers? Yeah, I, I think that'll be a good one. Um, we should do more of that. Uh, I think that's more beneficial for you guys, you know, than just watching somebody draw all the time. Uh, so, yeah, we can definitely set that up. Uh, like I said, I needed to get some of this right where I know that this is um, functioning properly. So I have more confidence jumping in and doing these. Because so I'd really like to make it where, you know, if I'm just randomly working on something... And, I, you know, I could share more of that process and not worry about it. But when the, uh, I was trying to live stream off Wi-Fi, which is always a mistake. But I just, I had a pretty good Wi-Fi. I mean, generally when I'm utilizing it, it seems like it's working really well. So I thought that was adequate. But that's, I guess that's not really the point. And plus, you got it, it's upload to download speed. So when you're live streaming, you got to watch your uploads. You can have a great download speed, but if your upload is horrible, then obviously your live stream is going to suffer. So yeah, I needed to just kind of educate myself on things I already knew, but I was ignoring. And now I got this 100 foot ethernet cable running through my house because I have to figure out where I can port it through the walls into the basement. Yeah, so it's a crazy trip hazard. I love it, but it's working. It's working. I don't know my poor family, they just have to deal with me like constantly running wires and changing computer setups. And they're probably just like, goodness, go get a real job. Okay, let me read through these a couple real quick. Uh, ch -ch 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 -ch. I'm going to have to skip through a few and try to pick and choose here. Um, okay, what brush do you use for your blue lines? I just convert this, the artwork, to blue line by... You see, and you see that you can do this on the layer level or the group level. And you just click this little icon right here. That makes it a blue line. You can change this blue box here to whatever color you want. And then I add a new layer over top. I should have named this. I'll generally name it inks for, you know, like 
uh, panel one, so inks P1, just abbreviate it. And then uh, just ink over top, and I'm just using the G pen. And I actually just set my um, my Wacom driver settings to like be really sensitive. So it's kind of hard to get the thinner line, but it's forcing me to press really soft. And uh, I kind of like that feeling sometimes. I go back and forth. Sometimes I like bearing down on the screen. Uh, it's more the way that I would draw on paper, I think. But at the same time, digital isn't traditional. Like it just doesn't really have to work or feel the same. Um, so yeah, so I got it set really soft, uh, mainly because I end up making my lines too thin when I'm inking if I if I have it set that way. So I'm trying to get away from that. Uh, you, you know, like zooming in, I'm zoomed in way too far, really, but. I got to remember that this is going to be a smaller panel, so I, I got to really fight the urge to zoom in that much. But also, if if I have a brush that's giving me really fine lines, again, I'm going to be inclined to use more tight lines than I need to. Those lines need to be a bit thicker, I think. Icon, thanks very much for saying that. Saying it, you know that you purchased the classes on Skillshare and all that. I really appreciate that. Uh, it does help me do what I do here, so thank you. That's awesome of you to say. Uh, Tech Atomic, thanks so much for saying you just subbed. That's fantastic. Love to have you. Uh, Anime uh, asks, uh, what do you use, Clip Studio Paint Pro or Clip Studio Paint uh, Clip Studio EX? This is the EX version. You can see it right up top there. See that? But yeah, it's uh, it, it's the one where I can create a full comic all in one document. So. Uh, that's the main reason I did it. I think there's a few other bells and whistles, but I'll tell you what, man. I don't care which version you get. Or, oh, I'm sorry. I do care. I would go with the more advanced one, but there, it's such a good deal no matter what it is. For one, you buy it. You own it. Uh, I'm glad they haven't changed it yet. I hope they haven't changed that at the point where I'm recording this video, uh, live stream, I guess. But, you know, it's just so worth the money. I spent 200 bucks on mine back in the day. It was worth every single penny, and I see it go on sale for way less. Um, so yeah, I would I would recommend it. You know, obviously. All right, let's see what else here. R for rotate, space bar for move. You guys can let me know too if you got any questions about, you know, the actual software and how to use it for these different. Uh, I mean, we're kind of you know we kind of discussed a little bit of that, but. Any questions you got, that's, that's really what these live streams are for. Um, you basically can ask me anything you need to, within reason, I guess, and then I'm going to do my best to help you with that. Um, so, yeah, these these are really important, I think. I, I love I love live streams where you can actually talk to the people and, you know, ask them a question that you, that's been bugging you or whatever. Okay, so that's a good one. Rob, uh, Rob N. Menstrual. Robin Menstrual. Um, do you have a certain line weight that you won't go smaller than? When inking, I struggle that with a uh, struggle with that a lot. And like you said, zoom in too far. Yeah, so so I, I am just um, addicted to zooming in. It, it really sucks. I, I know it's a bad habit. I do it. I like detail. I like clarity. But we have to remember that this is all getting reduced anyways, so I gotta keep pulling back. Now, in a perfect world, if my screen was a little bit bigger, or rotated, but I'm not gonna rotate it for a stream, I could get 11 by 17 uh, perfectly on this on this uh, the Cintiq I got, right? Then I probably wouldn't zoom in as much, but then again, I don't know. I still pull out a magnifying glass and readers on my page work. I, I like being up close to the artwork and really seeing into it more but yeah it's a it's a total hindrance and a total bad habit do I go blo below a certain size I don't really pay attention to that you can see the brush size over here with the G pen these dots and as I'm using the bracket keys it's cycling back and forth you think I would pay attention to that and I don't I should but I don't so yeah the, the best thing we can do is is keep pulling back and try to work from as far back as possible and just remember that since it is digital we can you know clean up 
just anything. So I think what you're better off doing is kind of uh, flying through the work and then go back and, and, and edit if you need to. And sometimes, a lot of times, you're probably going to look at it and go, hey, it looks fine. I really don't need to edit as much as I thought. Oh, I missed a spot. No. All right, there we go. That happens every now and then. And then I have to figure out where I left that open area. Probably here, probably there, probably all over the place. I love the fact that fills are so quick, though. Cannot beat that. Um, so, yeah, I wish I had better advice for you there. Like, yeah, I don't go below 0 .005, you know, whatever the brush size is, but I don't. I just, uh, I do it visually. But what I can tell you is, is yeah, you, you really kind of want to zoom back to where you know, like, all right, I got a comic here. You guys can't see it, but I can hold the comic against the, the scene or my screen. And if I was to pull back right about there, it's probably not going to relate well to what you guys are seeing. But what I'm saying is visually now I know how big that, that panel is. And yeah, I can look at it and go, wow, I'm wasting time. No one's going to look at that detail. So yeah, it's, it's something I, I can not only preach, I need to practice. And, um, yeah, so I think really, realistically, I shouldn't be zooming in any further than this. And it's hard to do because I put in all these little details that I want to see more clearly. That's a tough one, man. That's why bad habits are such a, you know, got to fight them. Got to get away from them. Yeah, thanks, Tech Atomic. That's very kind of you to say. I'm glad I can inspire. Yeah, Shura J says, I love to sketch, but I like patience when it comes to comics or storyboarding. Uh, should appreciate comic artists. Yeah, it's it's not easy, even for me. And I've been, I've been practicing and working at it a long time. I've produced books. I've done cover. You know, it's a lot easier to knock out a couple pages or cover. But when it really comes to a lengthy project, that's when you're tested. And I'll, I'll be completely honest. I... I got a long ways. I still got a long ways to go. Uh, I can do it, but I definitely get distracted. I definitely find reasons to stop when I shouldn't. Uh, you know, part of it is, you know, if you're like trying to make money doing something else and the comics don't make as much, that becomes real easy to say, well, you know, I should be doing this other thing. I got to make money. I got to do this. I got to do that. But the, the real deal is it's never going to get off the ground if you don't somehow put it on the front burner even though you know it's it's not the financial uh staple in your you know your list of things to do but the other part is like you're saying just staying on it you know just you know sketching's fun right and then working through a sketch and getting it to a finished result and I'll th i think a big part of that is finding a workflow that really works for you that you're not you don't feel like you're compromising because that's another big one for me. Like I can draw a more animated, clean style with less rendering, less shadows, way faster. Like I could do a book a month, no problem, if I didn't do all the rendering. Now, so so what happens is I've tried that before. Right? I've tried to really dwindle down the style and go with something a lot lighter and a little cartoony and looks more like an animated, you know, something you'd see on um, an animated series, right? But I always feel like I'm compromising, so I never follow through on that. This is the style I want to do, but this is the style that takes me longer than I wish it did. So I keep thinking, well, I'll just work really hard and I'll get faster. And that does, you know, you do figure out tricks and, you know, a big part of it, like we we're just talking, zooming into the work is really probably hurting because uh, that's one of the neat things about working on an actual page. You you're kind of forced to just deal with the space you got and then you're not gonna so so you know you might have to like work traditionally to speed up uh and then as far as like you know you said you love sketching more like sketch and then practice just tightening up the sketch a little more and seeing seeing how it's uh you know looked at by others do they love that a lot of people love sketches i'll put it this way like when i share sketches on social media they always do better than the finished art. It's because there's so much energy and they're so and they're a little bit more loose. I'm, I'm assuming this is why that people can use their imagination to connect the dots. 
um, sometimes you want that. You want a little bit of like um, mystery into what's there and you don't want to have to explain every line, every shape, every form. Uh, it takes some of the fun out of it. So yeah, sketches generally are great. And then there's some really neat pencil styles that people go straight to color over pencil. So I think that if you really put your mind to it and like maybe try to, you know, rework your process a bit, you might be able to find something to meet in the middle. And then I think a good a good way to see if it, it's working, besides sharing the content online, obviously, is just uh, create like some mini comics and get them out to people and send them over to some people that you uh, respect and want to get their opinion and give them to some friends. Get you know, mini comics are great. Like I. I really miss that when I was at the shows and we would always have like a, a mini, what do we call them, zines, something like that. But just mini comics and we, we'd do them every now and then for shows and it was just fun passing those out and getting people's response and feedback. It was good times. Can't wait for the shows to be back. Oh, Tech Atomic, I like that one. Start from the heart, that's how I started. Seven years of work, that's fantastic. Yeah, Tubbs Dub saying again, I have a really bad habit zooming in. Yeah, it's it's a it's a pain. I mean, it's hard not to though, you know. And then I'm you know I'm just now like I had I had great vision my whole life, you know. And from staring at these devices and drawing comma, I don't know. Finally, it caught up with me, and I had to get fitted for my first pe uh, pair of glasses. And uh, I hate them. I absolutely can't stand them. But it's because I, I live so much of my life without ever needing them that now it's like, oh, where'd I put my Dang glass, you know, it's, it's just a pain, but whatever. It is what it is. Gotta deal with it. But digital, you don't have to do that. Like, I don't have to wear glasses. I mean, I do, and I know I should, but you can zoom in as much as you need, so it kind of almost, like, makes you feel like you don't need to reach for your glasses, you know, which, again, is probably, uh, you know, pr it's probably an issue. You probably, sh you probably shouldn't be doing that. It's probably what led to me needing <laughs> glasses. I don't know. Too much light being blasted in my eyes from devices. Uh, TG, TG Inc. says, uh, hey, Robert, you working on some new inking brush packs? I'm just going to add to the inking set that I have because uh, so many people have supported that set. I don't want to you know, keep always releasing another one like you got to re-up. Like if, you're a, if you already own the existing set, you just get the updated brushes. And I'm wor I've been working on a, uh, a hair stubble brush. It's, I'm al almost got it perfect. It's like... I'm trying to get some of these brushes just right where when I show them to you guys, you're like, oh, that's awesome. That totally fits the, the need. And one of them is uh, hair stubble. Like, so characters like Wolverine or I just did one of Savage Dragon. I'm like sitting here doing all the little hairs. I'm like, God, this is a perfect way to use a, a perfect opportunity for a good brush. Um, but I can't get it right. It doesn't, it doesn't look as natural or as cool as when you do them by hand. But man, it's just such a pain to sit there and draw every little hair on somebody's face and arms like again like you know wolverine somebody used to sit there for freaking half hour drawing arm hairs so i'm trying to work on some for that uh, and also i want to get back to some that are just good textures um so yeah I'm, I'm, i got a few ideas in the works on that so i'll be releasing more on that real soon uh right now the only thing i'm working on besides the comic is I'm doing another Skillshare on how to draw fight poses. Um, but I want to make sure it's really good. Like, I don't want to just slap out some lessons on that because it's not the easiest subject. And so I feel like I really need to show you guys, like, a variety of angles and, you know, the iconic punches and kicks. So, yeah, that might be a little slow going, but it, it should be a good one. I've already got some really great feedback on that one. Uh, from you guys so thank you for that because some of them it's like I'll make a class or I'll make a video and I'll think oh this will be so helpful people will dig this and then it falls flat and then other ones it's like and you guys are like yes we've been waiting for this thank you all right so let's see what else read 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 Oh, by the way, let me ask you guys again. Stream health looking good? Because it always tells me good on this end. I want to make sure it's good on your end. 
Let me check. It says uh, stream is healthy. Stream health is excellent. Wow. We got a good bill of health on the on this side anyways. No, I, I'm starting from the bottom up now. No tubs dubs. I haven't read the Walking Dead comics. Uh, I want to though. I need to. Uh, I'll see if they're on Comixology. It, it's been just too easy for me to consume my comics through that app. I've talked about this before. I feel so guilty. But uh, it's easy. It works. And that's that's what I find myself doing. Uh, Icon, what do you think is the best Skillshare class from your classes? I can tell you the most popular two are how to improve your figure drawing and learn the ba uh, learn the basics to uh, figure drawing. Uh, for some reason, those have done the best, so I would say start there because that's got the most students and the most um, traction. So apparently, other people like it for whatever reason, and yeah, just start with that. But it really depends on what you're after. Like I have ones on just drawing facial features and. Uh, you know, breaking down all sorts of different things so that you can jump in and learn. I, I try to make the stuff like chapters in a book. You know, if you want to learn a specific thing, you find that chapter and you go in and do that thing. Uh, so that's why I have a lot of individual specific uh, videos and, and Skillshare classes. And even when you buy a full course, they're broke down into all those sections so that you can Know, get in there and, and learn just what you need to at that given time. If it's not in there, you make sure to comment, let me know, and I'll uh, see what I can do to fix that. Oh, thanks, Tub Dubs. Yeah, Tub Stubs. It's hard for me to say that one. Yeah, I'm glad you're saying the stream health is good. Sweet. Hopefully this fixed the issue. I, I know it probably did. I just like to ask, but yeah, it was silly that I was trying to use Wi-Fi. Total, total rookie mistake there. I tend to think of Wi-Fi like it's like it's magic. Well, magically it'll probably work because you know it just magically sends a signal to my devices, so maybe it'll work for live streaming. But I, I knew it wouldn't. Not to mention, I just upgraded my uh, internet to like the fastest I could get my greedy little hands on. And they're like, oh, you get this speed and this speed, upload download speed. And it was a massive upgrade from what I had. And it still is. But when I did, I've ran speed tests about three, four times, I don't know, a few times now. It has, it's barely. Um, blasted past half of what they said so it's just funny how when they're promoting stuff to you and trying to get your money you know it's like yeah this is this is you know super fast this much faster you're gonna get these speeds and no it was almost half of what they said but it's it's still way faster than what I had so I'm still happy but I'm not happy with the fact that you know these companies and their sales taxes are just so unethical But hey, that's how it is. We're just we're just consumers. That's what they do to us. Here, little consumer, come consume this new special thing. Give us your money. All right, I'm probably sounding really depressed. Ain't I? <laughs> we're not just consumers. We're people, dang. No, but we're we're creative people. You know what's really cool about that? We can actually take this stuff and and make a living with it. I mean. Like we can take internet, um, the ability with the internet and all this stuff, and because we're creative types, we can make stuff and share it. Oh, just it's there is unlimitless potential with that. I, I try to get people to see that because they don't realize, like back in the day, you know, you had to go to a comic convention, you had to make uh, connections. I mean, you still do, but you don't. It's just not as hard as it was. I mean, shoot, I got to hook up and do a live stream, a couple live streams with with David Finch. I mean, how cool is that, you know? Um, I mean, that was all because of the opportunities that we have 
with the internet, with YouTube, sharing stuff, sending out an email, you know, like making those connections that way. But, you know, nothing replaces conventions. I'm not knocking conventions. I love conventions. Can't wait till those are back in full swing. I'll be right back in there. I was just starting to get good at at uh, setting up my table and I, had a, I got a nice little stand going up and selling prints. And yeah, it's 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 been pretty cool. Uh, or was pretty cool, I should say. And then, you know, freaking C word hit. But whatever, we'll get over it, we'll get through it. We'll, keep, we'll get back to our regularly scheduled programming, I guess. <laughs> Can I be a mod? I... Yeah, I got I to gotta look into how that all works. I've had some, some people ask me that have, I'd hate to step over them because they've already been there asking. Uh, but if they, if that falls through, I'll put a, I'll put a message out to you guys. And then I, I got to read up on how to do it. I'm real apprehensive about just saying yes to something I don't understand, even though it's probably for the best for these. You know, like I, I probably need to just get people uh, working with me on this stuff. Um so yeah, let me look into that, and then I will keep you guys posted. Uh, I do have uh, somebody that's been really adamant about letting me know that they would they would mod for me, um, but they might be busy doing their own thing. So I'll, I'll keep you guys posted, and I do appreciate the offer uh, very much. So. Uh, do you ever use Sketchbook Pro? Mike Jones says. Oh yeah, all the time. Yeah, or you know, not as much as I used to. You know, what kind of took the place of it for me was Procreate. So what happened is I would go to Sketchbook Pro when I felt like I wanted to draw something more, uh, almost like more detailed. But I don't know if that's the right way to say it. It, it just there's times when I'm not drawing as well in Clip Studio, and I feel like I just need to mix things up. Okay. And so I always felt like I got better pencil work, drawings, sketches from Sketchbook Pro. And then what happened is Procreate came along and stole my heart. And uh, so I just started using that a lot more. And, and I still use Sketchbook Pro, but I'll tell you what, I think it would have been a tougher battle had their app been better. So like their, their desktop version, and it's free by the way, which is fantastic. Their desktop version is uh, amazing. It's, it still has a lot of my favorite tools. It just hasn't been updated in forever, so that's that's that. But, um, but then the uh, the app, I just don't like it. Like it's really kind of feels kind of clunky by comparison. And uh, I like when, now, now mind you, Procreate is only an app, but it runs really well. I just love the way that they made it so streamlined and functional. Um, and then Clip Studio runs exactly the same or almost exactly the same as the desktop to the app version but the the screen is so much smaller on the um, iPad Pro that I still find the um, the app for Clip Studio to be a little bit of a distraction so yeah so that's that's my uh, long-winded answer to that I basically still use it but because I started getting so hooked on sketching uh, and procreate it really kind of took over but I am trying to get back to my desktop uh, that's what you see me doing here obviously I'm working on the desktop now and uh, I just really just kind of can't uh, can't beat the bigger screen you know I really like having a bigger screen I almost want to run out and buy like that 36 or something but I read the reviews, you know, the Cintiq 36, it's massive, which would be just fun. Like you could, with that size, I'm pretty sure your pages would be bigger than 11 by 17, just sitting there, you know, pretty close, whatever it is. But the thing is, is that uh, I read the reviews and the reviews on it are horrible. Like, they're not horrible. It's like a four star average review setup on that device. And I just feel like for something that's that much money and that nice and that kind of like the Cadillac of devices, that sucker needs to have way better reviews. Like, it just every time I even got close to thinking about buying it, 
I just couldn't do it. And plus the price tag is just not it's not cheap. And mine mine works. The Cintiq uh, 22 HD from like seven years ago it still works. It just flickers when I start it up. That's the only bad thing. But that goes away and then I'm bam off and running. So if it ain't broke then why replace it or why fix it I guess. I've been trying to get on more traditional art, but it's, it's just hard making changes. It's like I'll have a really, you know, like a knock out one of my better pieces. I, I feel like the art comes out better on traditional, but then I can't make changes like I can digitally, and it slows me down and just throws me off. But I need to. I'm gonna keep working at that and get over over that feeling. Yeah, I don't use a lot of the 3D models. Uh, Aaron Mason asking if I use the 3D models with Clip Studio. I really don't use them. I probably should. I do. I just, was just drawing a kicking pose with legs coming out towards uh, camera, and it was such a pain. Like I, it, you know, it's one of those things where I go to draw it. And I'm like, well, you can tell I don't draw that a lot because I can't get the shapes right on the first couple tries. Uh, and that's where I will generally try to pull reference or uh, a 3D model. It's great, um, but it's. Uh, I think I, t I typically would use like art pose. Oh man, I think I was supposed to link that in the last video. Yeah, I might want to jump back over there. Um, but yeah, so art pose I think is one of them. There's an app for my phone. And um, I got another one that's got some really good anatomy, but it's not a full posing, but it breaks down the anatomy really well. If you guys want, I'll, I'll pull it up and get you the name. But yeah, so there's some great apps for that stuff. You know, you just got to look around and see what, you know, some of them are really generic. Some of them like, you know, you can, I don't know. You can always seem to tell what the reviews on those. If people are really digging it, they're going to leave great reviews. And then generally you'll be able to find uh, some use for it. All right, what do we got here? Make sure I'm not missing. Uh... Oh, comic book Bob. Good to have you. Thanks for showing up, man. It's been a while. Uh, just inking on some of the Blackstone comic. I'm way behind on getting the sucker wrapped up. So just sitting here applying some inks. Using Clip Studio. Uh, Benjamin, are there any do's and don'ts tips when it comes to shadowing? When to use solid blacks and when to hatch? Um, yeah, you know, I mean, you just got to follow the light source. And I'm not gonna pretend like I'm the greatest at it I break the rules a lot but like all right this little rock formation right his hands coming up here so there's got to be a bit of drop shadow there and I also have to think about the plane changes of the um, the rocks so for instance it's not as simple like for instance I feel like if I would do a shadow like that you know you could pull it off and you could just render this way right but it really doesn't explain the uh, the plane change as much. So what I did instead is I, I use a, a shadow going horizontally and I go with these these you know shifts in the, the rock formation. Or not, this isn't a formation, this is like a busted up wall, but and then down here again, you know, I'm picturing the light source at the top, so he's got a highlight on the back of his head. So I tend to like start shadowing things at the bottom. And also the fact that there's a highlight on his leg, it's almost like more of a, I don't necessarily have to shadow this, but I'm gonna do that anyways because it provides contrast against the highlight on his leg. So sometimes I'm just thinking that way as well. It's almost like, uh, I think of it like pushing and pulling. You know, you're pushing and pulling the light source uh, with shadow and vice versa. So it's just a kind of, constant back and forth but as things are receding away from the light so as this wall piece comes down here I'm gonna be more likely to throw up some rendering of some kind you know to, to shadow it or I might just block in a big shadow but I feel like that's a bit forced yeah I don't think that's necessary or maybe it's not I mean the lights over here all of this could be in shadow and then it would pr 
then it would push his leg forward. So yeah, I might I might actually try that because really that does make sense. And a lot of times the way I'll test it is I'll just go back into the layer, add another layer. Anything I do now will be blue lined because I blue lined the uh, the group, and I can just block this in real quick. See if it you know if it works. Because it does create like a nice bold shape, break up all the uh, miscellaneous rendering, maybe even some of this pipe here. But then I would come back with a negative, maybe break up the, the line for the pipe, cracks in the rock. Yeah, I think that works. But again, it needs to work like, you know, from back here. And really, I could probably just drag that up and leave that as a as a inked layer. Hmm. Oh, you know what? And then sometimes I'll drop the opacity back like this cuz I have some other details that I you know, put in there so maybe I want to keep them. And I could just do some of the the negative lines in there. Yeah, I don't know. I might keep it, I might not. And then what I do there is if it's something I'm unsure about, I'll leave it for a bit, work on something else, and just kind of mull it over, you know, see if it if it uh, if it grows on me. Sounds gross. Shouldn't be anything growing on me. But hey, that's what we have a character with a parasite on his back, so I guess it's fitting. Something's growing on him. He's fine with it. Uh, let's see. I didn't look at the... Are we still streaming good, everybody? Let's see any more comments? Okay. What's your favorite piece of art? Ooh, that's a tough one. What's up with all the tough questions here today, folks? Um... Favorite piece of art? Well, if you're talking comic art, it would have to be... Uh, I would say Spider-Man... Uh, the cover to Spider-Man number four by Todd McFarlane. That'd have to be my all-time favorite. I even got it on the wall here. And um, if you're talking art in general, like my favorite piece of art ever... would be the Vatican. No, that's probably not a good answer. The the entire Vatican. No, I don't know. I just saw so much so many amazing things that every time I think of breathtaking art, I think of all the sculptures and art and, and paintings and uh you know all around and in the Va the Vatican. So I got to go there when I was in my early twenties and it was just yeah, pretty freaking cool. Um, so yeah, I don't know I, what what my favorite piece of art other than those answers that were a bit odd. You probably meant comic art, right? Pretty sure that's what you meant. All right, did you watch WandaVision? Yes, I did. Stream is smooth. Thanks, Kirk. Kirk. Um, yeah, I watched WandaVision, and I'll be honest, I really didn't like it in the first couple episodes. Like, did not like it at all. Like, almost wanted to make a video bashing it. No, it just threw me off. I was like, what are they doing here? No, they're going to waste this awesome opportunity to make this, you know, really action-packed cool. You know, what I'm so used to wanting to see with um, Marvel and with superhero flicks. You know, and obviously a very different direction. And I'll be honest, I never read the WandaVision stuff. So, I don't know how much that lined up with the, you know, the, the real... Uh, storylines that they were creating or I know they're always a bit different for TV but anyways after that slow start it just got better and better with a few bumps in the road but overall better and better and then yeah by the end of it I watched the final and I was totally impressed I'm not gonna do any spoilers for people who haven't checked it out yet I'll just say that I was entirely impressed and yeah I'm really hoping they just keep continuing on with that because that was a neat way to to start it and it built up, and I think it flowed pretty well into the end. Uh, but yeah, I was worried. First two, three, it might have even been all the way up into episode four. I was like in and out of even 
paying attention to them. Like a, a lot of the stuff I'll play while I'm drawing. I would say majority of the stuff, that's what I do. I'm just drawing and I let it play in the background and I glance over. Now, the bad thing is, is I miss a lot of visuals that way. Um, I think it helps for like, you know, your imagination, like let, let your own visuals kind of come in, but uh, connect the dots. But then again, it also allows me to watch it a couple times. Like I'm okay with seeing the same, well, if it's good, if it's got a good storyline, uh, I'm, I'm okay with watching it a few times. Well, since I'm not always looking at it like that, it kind of fills in the gaps over time anyways. But And there are certain ones I can't take my eyes off of. Like I couldn't, at first, I couldn't do that with uh, Avengers Endgame because I was just like so, you know, entranced by it. I was like a you know, the little bug uh, going towards the bug zapper, you know, like, oh, it's so beautiful. Bzz. Like that was Endgame for me. Like, But now I've seen it enough where I can just let it play and, and enjoy the storyline of it. Um, it's, it's funny though, though, I'm actually getting to the point I've seen it enough times that there's a couple parts that I'm like, yeah, that's kind of cheesy. That's kind of like, you know, it took a while. Like there's certain movies you watch them one time, you see that. And then you watch them a second. You're like, oh, I'll never watch this thing again. It's horrible. And then there's other ones where it takes a while, but then the, the flaws, if you can call them flaws, you know, things that bug you about it, whatever, start to eventually come out. But I got to admit such, you know, Super well done set of movies, you know, that just, I mean, all of them really, but yeah, they finished that really strong, which I, I was, you know, thinking, man, it's going to be easy to mess this up because they did so good throughout the uh, duration of them. You know how it is. Nobody likes endings. We all get mad at endings, especially when it's something that's really good. I mean, look at Game of Thrones, if you know, if you watch that or whatever, um, it was so good in so many ways. And then they just really disappointed everybody with the ending. You know, the ending was just so, I don't know, almost out of place. It just didn't even really kind of fit anything. Um, and, and it was weak, you know. I mean, I hate to say that, but it was a really weak ending. But I'm sure there's some people out there that were like, oh, totally caught me off guard. I love it. <laughs> you know, that happens too. So can't please everybody. Yeah, so J Jacob's saying it took too long to get into it, but the last few episodes were great. Yeah, same here. If your mind was an island, what would it look like? Goodness, what's up with is this? Like these are philosophical questions, right? Psychological questions. I don't know. Um, if my mind was an island, it would have a big resort on it. Lots of lots of food. Lots of free food. All right, so let's see here. Um, yeah, let me know if you guys are getting bored watching this. I mean, we're getting a nice little chunk done, which is cool. Um, but you guys are welcome to tell me if you want to try something else. Not a big deal. But I do like the fact that I'm getting some of my book done while live streaming. That's pretty cool. You know, I like to think of these as like we're sitting at a convention and... You guys are just hanging out around the table, right? Because that's how, how it would be before. I don't know. A lot of times, though, that would happen, and I would get up, and I feel like I need to stand up and talk and hang out with everybody. And I think that's actually counterproductive, isn't it? Like, people don't want you to really... I've heard mixed opinions about this. You guys let me know yours. Like, when you're at a convention and you see somebody drawing, do you just want to watch them create? And talk to them that way or do you feel like like uh they're not doing their job like as you know as a salesperson you're told you gotta stand up smile make eye contact shake hands you know maybe not as much on the shake hands anymore but you know so like do you feel wronged when the artist or creative person is just doing their thing or is that what you're there for at the table like i, I would i, I would kind of want to know your guys opinion because i always that battles that's a battle i face when i'm at the shows <laughs> Tough dubs. No, not an in-depth philosophical question. Just inter interesting conversation starters. Gotcha. I'm just messing. I don't. I don't know what's. I don't even 
know what philosophical really means. I think it has something to do with Plato, right? Plato, Plato is very philosophical. But I'll be honest, it's every time I play with it, I just I just make the same weird constructions. I never feel philosophical when I'm playing with Plato. All right. What size digital canvas generally is used for professional work? I would say uh, 11 by 17, 300 DPI is your best bet. That's what I use. And I want to say that that's... Now, when you reduce the work, it's obviously different. But I want to say that's what you generally want to work at. And it provides you a good uh, result for reduction. Now, you know what? As I say this, I'm actually at 11 by 17. It says 10 by 15, but it's not. And I'm working at 600 DPI. But keep in mind, that's only here, uh, and only because I, I think because I, I messed up when I started the canvas, uh, the document, and I kept it that way. Um, so I try to generally be at 300 so that it, everything runs smoother. Uh, but if you can get 600 and you get the lines that you like, it's all good. Just remember, it doesn't need to be as crisp as you think it does. Again, we talked about this with reduction, and again, I'm zoomed in too far. I really need to pay attention. Where's that numerical? Oh, it's right up here. It shows you the percentage of zoom, I believe. And yeah, I really need to be like back here. But see, I'm gonna to try to ink this arm piece from back here. I wanna see if I can even do it because I'm so not used to doing this, but I gotta quit like over like rendering stuff and worrying so much about it. Like if it works from a distance, then it works, right? So I'll just stay back here, fight the urge to zoom in. It'll all be okay. Like I've been trying to, um, and I'll probably bring a video out on this pretty soon, but I've been trying to draw smaller panels on my Bristol board and emulate the details that I need. So like when you go to draw a face, it's, really small in the um, the scene you know you just draw the shadows of the face right you can't really draw in a shape of an eye and things like that so you you shape it with the um, the shadow like creme back here running at blackstone so if I was working from back here I mean I, I can't draw eyes I more or less have to just draw a pocket of shadow where the eyes are the shadow under the cheeks so it forces you to think differently when you're pulled back. And that's really, I guess, the point. You know, like that's why it's so good to work on 11 by 17 pages when you can. I actually want to start laying out the pages digitally because that's where I, I generally make the most changes in the, the layout process, right? And so I lay it all out, I thumbnail it, I get maybe like the base mannequins working, the larger shapes of shadows, the composition going and then print that out on Bristol board and then take it from there because then I'm forced to keep that size relationship visible, uh, vis visibly in my face and I got to make decisions based on that. So Okay, just reading through a couple of these real quick and sipping my my coffee. My my butter coffee. Sounds gross, right? It's keto, baby. I'm doing some keto. But coconut oil and butter in my, my coffee. No sugar. It's not easy. Alright, so I think it's called bulletproof coffee. Alright, so I'm on I'm on. Um, hey Rob, I just got to say I've been watching a lot of Ed uh, Foychuk's work, I'm amazing like you, but I feel in a way I've been improving uh, in one way. Oh good. No, Ed's an amazing teacher and instructor and you know we all work together through How to Draw Comics which is awesome. We got like a, a really good team of instructors. You know I think we all offer different things. Clayton has you know his unique abilities ed does I, I like to think i i do and and we all just kind of powwow and there's some other ones too even david finch is on there now and 
it's super cool. I mean, it really is nice seeing all these other pro instructors that, that, you know, do what we do and like sharing notes and we get the, you know, powwow here and there. Yeah. Good, good set of guys. So yeah, definitely good content. And just so you guys know, I won't always promote how to draw comics.net, not just the website that too, but then the, um, they have a great um, YouTube channel you can subscribe to. And also, their Facebook group is phenomenal. And I post work on there all the time. Everything from sketches to little drawing, tuts, whatever. Um, just a really cool resource. So if you guys aren't, I'm sure if you watch the live stream here, you're already part of it. But if you're not, check out howtodrawcomics.net. A uh, great bunch of, of artists over there that really uh, share a lot of good content. Uh, and then Amon, another another question. Also another question, as you know, I've been wanting to draw comics for a while now, but I'm curious, how long did it take for comic art, comic art to kick in for you? Um, yeah, I'd, I don't know, man. Like, um, I, I was drawing comics. I started getting into comics heavily when I was 15, 16, about 15, and I was posting work at shops and comic shops, and everything's very different. Uh, now than it was back then obviously and because I mean we're talking like the 90s or something but anyways uh I was uh, you know trying to improve I, I think I thought I was ready back then I mean I was already sending work to Marvel I don't know if you guys remember Wizard used to have this thing where you could draw different art contests uh, and, and by the way let me say it real quick you should be joining art contests as often as possible so that's one thing Sharing your work in any every way that you can is a big part of getting better and, and knowing if you're good enough and, and seeing what people like and what people don't and what they like and what they don't. So anyways, I was I was sharing work through art contests and Wizard used to have this one that I remember specifically where you would draw, I believe it was Wizard, I'm pretty sure, you would draw on the back of an envelope and you'd draw your characters or fan art on the envelope and you'd mail that in and it'd get featured, you know. And uh, I never got one featured that I yeah that I noticed or whatever, but I was I was totally digging that aspect. I remember I drew Die Hard from uh, Young Blood on the on. I, was, I wish I had a picture of it because I I'm sure it isn't as cool as I remember it now, or I think I remember it. You know, like but it was it was cool to me back then, and uh, I was really impressed with myself. You know, I thought I had I was ready for the big leagues, all that fun stuff. Um, I only got one letter back from Marvel, and it was a rejection letter, but it was you know, it was nicely put, but it was a rejection letter. and um, But it didn't stop me from getting into independent comics, so I kept sharing my work, and then somebody gave me a shot to draw. Um, it was actually Louis Faba from Time Press, allowed me to draw, um, or paid me to draw, I shouldn't say allowed me, but he did allow me, uh, to draw Air on Assault, and I did four books for him. So... And now, if, if looking back, if somebody would have said, hey, were you ready for comics? Now, looking back, I would have said no. So, it's all subjective. You know, like, you have to let yourself be ready and let yourself know, that, all right, some things aren't going to be perfect. Like, as you're drawing panel to panel, I'm sorry, they're not all going to be perfect faces and perfect perspectives and perfect, draw, perfectly drawn cars and hands, for God's sakes. Like, so, so you can't really... I don't know, hold yourself like over the coals and say, oh, everything's got to be to this level or I shouldn't draw a comic book. Uh, I think that's a surefire way to make sure you don't draw the book. Instead, know that as you're drawing page after page after page, you're going to get a lot better. You're going to figure out things. You're going to use different techniques. You grow as you go. And so you just have to like just do it, you know, like, and then and and rest assured that as you make more and more pages, you'll be all right. Um, it doesn't matter. They're they're not. There's no such thing as perfect. There's not like these artists that all start out amazing. Like some of them do, I'm sure, and some fight really hard to become really good at it. That's one of the reasons why I like uh, listening to David Finch and and even you know times I've got to talk to him about stuff. Uh, you know he he says like. I had to try really, really hard. Now, he's an amazing artist, right? Fantastic. We all know and agree with that. But he tells you that he had to work really hard. He saw that he had to work harder 
than other people. And I love that. I think that's so inspiring. Another one is uh, McFarlane, another person I identify with because he shows his bad art. Like, and here's this guy that literally, I don't want to say, well, I shouldn't say literally. He pretty much just took it to the top, right? He's like one of the most professional, iconic artists in comics ever. And he shows like that he had all these rejection letters and that he, uh, his art, I mean, I, I have a hard time saying this, but I'll be honest. I look at some of his old art and it's bad. And I'm like, how is it bad? This dude was so amazing and, and such a, it just shows he put in the work, you know, but I look at his old stuff and yeah, I'm like, I can't believe he drew it. And at the age, like it just, I would have pictured that his art would have looked stunning at such a young age. It doesn't always happen. Alex Ross uh, shares a piece that he did when he was a kid. And don't get me wrong, he was real little. But it's a funny looking little piece and it shows you how far he had to come as a, as a child to what he does now, which is just, you know, breathtaking, amazing work all day long. But yeah, so trust in the process. But the main thing is that you just got to like pump out work and finish pieces of work too. So this is another one that I see a lot that really bugs me. I'll see people, we had this on the happen on the live stream when we were uh, doing reviews or whatever, and people were sharing their work, but they were sharing like like just sketches. And I'm all right with that, I guess, to an extent, if, if you show some finished pieces of work as well. But if you show me a bunch of sketches, all and I'm not a pro to where I, sh I'm not trying to be too judgmental because I'm not really the guy to do that. But what I'm saying is if you show me a bunch of sketches, I'm just going to tell you flat out what I see. They could be great sketches, but it shows me that you're not finishing anything. So it'd make me, if I was hiring somebody for a book, I would be scared to hire, even if they were talented, cool sketches, unless they were sketches where I'm like, well, I guess we could just have somebody, have somebody apply color to that, or we can have a really good anchor come through and complete that. But like our, for instance, you don't show just you drawing a, an arm and a chest. You know what I mean? You gotta, you gotta like make yourself finish the work, even if you don't think it's perfect, that's fine. It doesn't matter. Um, cause again, there's no such thing as perfect anyways, but it's getting to the end of whatever it is you're drawing so that you can say, well, I did it to the best of my ability. I got plenty of ones where I don't want anybody to ever see them. They came out horrible and I just shove them in a drawer somewhere. Maybe, maybe they make it to the shredder, you know, but I try to make sure that I'm finishing stuff. And if I see in my sketchbooks, in my, my tablets or whatever, a bunch of uncompleted projects, as I'm working on my comic that should have been out a long time ago, um, then I'm, then I have to, I have to have a little talk with myself. <laughs> that sounds silly, but I, I got to sit down and say, all right, I got to change something. I got to be more organized. I got to be more accountable. Uh, whatever it is, less video games. Uh, usually, it's just, I think for me, anyways, and I guess we're all different in this department. But for me, it's like when I write things down, I create an outline and a game plan. I get it done. Uh, you wouldn't think that would need to happen with art. And again, it might not work for you. You know, maybe you just jump in. You got to, maybe the hard part for you is just jumping in. But generally when we jump in, we usually get a little bit more done than we thought. So I'm, I'm good with that part. I'm good at jumping in. Um, it's, it's probably focus for me. So, okay. So I, I did a couple of those. Hopefully those helped you out there. Uh, let's see what else we got. Uh, T Phantom Inconsistency says, Hey Robert, thanks a lot for all the tutorials that you've made throughout the years. It's fun to watch and helps me to improve my art. Love to see more. Uh, oh man, you finished that with see more and I almost clicked it. Isn't that bad? I'm so, I'm so, I'm such a trained monkey with, uh, social media and stuff. It always has a see more and you click it. Yeah, I almost clicked that. That's, that's crazy. Anyways, thank you very much for that. That's awesome of you to say. All right, just reading some of these real quick. Hey, Robin. Okay, so Trenton uh, Massey says, Hey, Rob, I was wondering how do you get control over the Tombow uh, hard tip? Because it's hard for me to render with it. Any tips? Awesome Blackstone art, by the way. Thanks so much for that. Um, yeah, I mean, I hate to say it just comes down to practice and then the paper type. Are you using Bristol Board Smooth? Hopefully you are because that's always going to give you a better line. Uh, and then you really just have to practice different types of lines uh, with different intensities and different angles of your hand. Like um, for a while, I couldn't pull lines upward. So you see I'm pulling lines upward right here. And I'm actually using a very 
uh, soft setting on my tablet. So it kind of reminds me of using a brush pen like that. Sometimes you just got to press really light or something that I'll do is I'll push down and almost, you know, this is traditionally by the way, but I, I think about it even when I'm working digitally. Uh, but it's definitely a traditional thing. I'll press down and get the ink going and then I'll pull up. So it's almost like I'm, I'm trying to drop down some ink and then feather it at least one time, maybe a couple times, but you know, you're pulling that ink that you drop down. Where if you're working with a, you know, more just the dry tip, sometimes it's, it's a different scratchier line. I don't know, it's hard to explain, but it, it just boils down to practice and, and the paper type. I would definitely recommend Bristol Board Smooth. Uh, what is it? The Strathmore 200 series is what I'm using now. It's pretty good. Uh, Butterfly says, do you ever use the 3D models assist you in Clip Studio? No, I don't. I've got a few other apps that I like to use for that. Uh, I've already mentioned them once. I'll, I'll, I should link to them, but it's, uh, let me pull up my phone and double check. It's Art art pose art pose pro is one what i like is i'll sit there i've got it as an app on my phone and, and my tablets right so what i'll do is when i'm trying to think of some good poses uh, so a lot of times i just sketch them i like just drawing my poses but there are those poses that i run into that are just tough to do so what i'll do is i'll pull up uh, an app like this and i'll m maneuver the characters around and do a screen grab a snapshot which they allow you to do a snapshot but you can also just use your phone snapshot and then I will send that over to my uh, device and I'll look at it and redraw it sometimes trace it first but I do this I always make sure to draw it on my own even after I trace it okay so I just want to really make sure that you guys are aware that I, I think tracing can be a really bad habit like you you can use it to learn but then you need to stop what you're doing and redraw the pose and then what I like to do is I'll redraw the pose and I'll put it next to the actual one and I'll study how far I'm off. Um, so hopefully you understand there's a lot to be learned in, through that process. But if you just start tracing them, you're just going to get better at tracing, I think. I mean, you will start to recognize certain shapes and things and, and all that. It's not entirely bad, but yeah, you got to be careful. Like, I think it's better to redraw the pose than actually trace the model so but that's just me I mean do whatever works for you I guess I know people have different uh, suggestions on that but I don't think the models or any reference I don't think any of that any of that's bad like there's just certain poses I can't draw without reference and I'm gonna zoom in because I can't see quite what's going on with this mask here um, yeah like I, I was just mentioning I had a, a kick pose that I'm trying to do and uh, you know, I could probably show you guys real quick, so I'll show you how bad I am at it. But this is where I'd pull reference. So the kick pose was the leg coming out towards camera. All right, so let's say the knee is here, calf here, and then a big foot. Right, this ugly foot. But this is how I start. I start real ugly and crude. The calf and the knee would be bigger. Okay, so here was my kick pose and this isn't even the same pose like a lot of times I won't draw the exact same thing you know twice in a row right it's like because I'm drawing freehand I'm just going from the, the brain box here so it's gonna be different quite a bit from time to time but anyway something like this so I was focusing on the overlaps that you get as things go you know away from us they're overlapping into the next shape the calf, that might come in front, but I'm going to leave it like this for now. There's two heads of the calf, so it might go like this. And the tricky part is always the foot. You'll see a lot of artists will just draw a flat shape of a foot. And then sometimes, if you're on just the right ankle, you'll see the side of the foot connect. You know, ankle here or something like that. So anyways, as soon as I start drawing this, I can just tell that this is not one of the poses that I have in my mental catalog as well as I would like to you know it's it's I'm still struggling to get that right so that's where I'd pull reference you know but I will try to draw it with no reference a couple times and then you know if 
I will also compromise and just say, hey, to heck with it. It's the best I can do today. It's going in the book or whatever. It's got to get done. Uh, so you got to be careful, too, that you don't just avoid it because you know you can't draw it. But that's where I think Poe's um, pose dolls and those 3D mannequins, I think that's all fine because you're going to learn these shapes eventually. And I'm going to keep drawing this pose till I get what I want. Uh, or, you know, it's not going to be this pose. This isn't as dynamic as I would like, but I'm just trying to explain a point. But um, but I know that this is one that I need to practice because it's not right. It's not like that heel. What the heck? But um, it's not right. So I got to learn there. That's a that's an aspect. It's exposing that I don't know what I need to about that pose. And mainly because I don't draw it a lot. Like I'm drawing characters in that direction less than I'm drawing characters like this. So there's a noticeable difference in my ability to um, to do that. And that's where I think reference and pose products are great. Yeah, see, like I, li I like that one by Jason Martin. Hey, Rob, I'm going to do uh, 60 gestures. Uh, wait, hey, Rob, I'm trying to get 60 gestures done a day, but end up spending too much time on them. How do you uh, decide when a gesture is finished? Um, yeah, so I guess I'll go back to that other screen real quick. Um, so look, like, like when you're gesture drawing, you want to think like this. Let me see how quick I can get. You know, you warm up to these too. It's not like they come out perfect right away. Or there's again, no perfect. Shouldn't have said that. Um, but let's say a gesture like this. Okay, so the character's running. Boom, they're coming out at us. Uh, let's see. We we'll get some twist in the waist because you don't want characters straight up and down. This arm's forward. This one's back, so it's got to be the opposite, right? So this arm's back. This leg's back. This leg's forward. Let's really push this one back. Like that. Never know how to place that foot bottom. We'll just say like this, right? Again, we're not going for perfection. Boom, there's a gesture. Like how long did that take? Now, some people look at this, hey, that's not a gesture. A gesture is when you do this, this, you know, these sweeping lines, these, like, like you're trying to draw, you know, figure drawing you're like oh I want this dancer and they're like their arms coming up like this their bodies out like this the other arms back like this the heads back and they do a lot more throwing of the lines right this arms coming out towards us a little bit here's a hand so they do a lot more of this flowing sweeping lines to me it's all gesture you know you're, you're just trying to look past you know i guess people would call this more of a mannequin or something but i don't i don't see it like that like i feel like you're just trying to look past all the details and capture what's underneath and if that pose works it works so at first it's hard because you want to sit there and, and you know you're like trying to think too much about what an arm looks like and so when i'm doing my gestures an arm for me is a circle for the shoulder a couple lines for the upper arm the form I see kind of like a triangle, an extended diamond shape, and then maybe this is a fist, and that's it. So I'm not going, I'm not at the level where I want to render this. I just want something that looks relatively like an arm in the least amount of strokes. Um, and then once you start getting better at thinking like that, it becomes a lot easier. So a torso becomes just a box with a W under it. You know, and then and that's it. And you you know, it slopes in. You know, you have a lat that's wider from this side. You know that the pelvis is like a oval with a V, a couple more ovals. So, so, you know, you can do that a lot faster. And once you start getting good at that, then you start going, wait a second. You know, the, the alignment here is just too straight. So let's, let's really play with that. Let's do more of the pinching on one side, the elongation on the other, or stretching on the other side. And then let's twist the, the hips. Like that's the one that I've been struggling with the most lately. But another technique for that is the bean shape. So you just throw in a bean shape. And then so what happens is it's a lot easier to kind of picture. So you got an opening for the neck, midsection for the chest. Since you already have this like bean shape, you can say, well, what if I twisted that 
a little bit more and brought the center line way over here. Does that work? You know, and but don't sit there and try to draw it to perfection. Just throw something in there and see if it works. Just real quick, quick shapes. Maybe it works, maybe it doesn't, but you're doing them so fast where you're not freaking out because you you're not spending you know 20 minutes on this thing to see if it even works. You're just playing around with different orientations of the arms and legs. You know, use your lightning bolt for arms. That always helps a little bit. Hands can be as simple as, you know, like a hand can just be, for the gesture stage, it could just be simple. You know, it doesn't have to be a detailed hand to, uh, to get the idea across of what you're trying to pull, uh, just the pose and the flow of the body. That one came out pretty stiff, but hopefully you get the idea there. Yeah, so just try to try not to overthink it. Try not to draw something all super detailed. Uh, when you think gesture, really go for gesture and put a timer up on your screen. That's what I do too. I don't. I don't. Uh, um, I make sure that I'm I'm not spending too much time in it because I put a timer right up on the screen, and uh, it forces you to just get it done. Just like having a deadline for a you know a series of pages or a book. You know, if you if you leave it up to yourself, like what I've done lately, I've just, you know, I get this book done when I can, it takes way longer. But as soon as somebody tells me, hey, I need that page or those pages by Friday, you know, what's gonna happen? You're gonna you're gonna figure out a way to get it done. And maybe compromise on quality, unfortunately. Hopefully not, but that does sometimes happen. Or drink way too much coffee. That almost always happens. Uh, T Phantom Inconsistency says, Hey Robert, another question. What happened to the Grogu? 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 Speed paint video. I watched it a few uh, a video a few weeks ago, and now I can't find it. Um, I, I'll be honest. I have no clue what you're talking about right there. Like, uh, I don't think I've ever drawn Grogu. Are you sure it was on this channel? Who is Grogu? Anybody? You're not talking about the uh, World of Warcraft, right? Because that's not Grogu. That's uh, what the heck is that guy's name? Oh, I'm so bad with this stuff. I'm so bad. Yeah, I don't know who Grogu is. Is that Dragon Ball Z? Probably ticking a bunch of you off right now. I'm sorry. Okay, what should we ink next? We have the little pipe here. Oh, wait. That's part of my other layer. Yeah, be careful when you start introducing other layers that you ink on the right layer. It's not really that big of a deal, but can be a bit of a pain at times. Oh yeah, I didn't finish this, this guy's face. Oh, Grogu and the Mandalorian. Oh yeah, I definitely ticked some people off. Grogu is Baby Yoda. <laughs> ah, I know him as Baby Yoda. I'm such a bad Star Wars fan, ain't I? Uh, my subscriber count is definitely going to drop for that one. I feel like Finkel from Ace Ventura. Drop the ball, or bad kick, or whatever. Um, yeah, so I don't know why it wouldn't be up. You know what? Let me check it though, because since it is uh, Star Wars product, maybe somebody took it down. I think it's on my Instagram. Did I do a time lapse there? You just want to see the time lapse of the the video? Because if it's down, I'll post it somewhere else. Um, I don't think I would have monetized it, so maybe that's why it's down. I don't know. Who knows? It's so weird with this, you know, this fan art stuff and all this, especially Star Wars product, because now they're Disney, right? So, yeah. So, we got to really be careful. I mean, Mickey Mouse is, is just, he's like a, you know, Mickey Mouse is mean, man. He doesn't let you draw his characters. You, you mess on his, you step on his property, he pulls out the shotgun. Kind of scared of Mickey. It's like all the other, all the times I've ever heard of people getting busted for IP stuff and and uh, 
drawn characters like, you know, copyrighted characters. It's always been Disney. I don't think I've ever heard of it with any other... I mean, I know it's out there. Don't get me wrong. I'm sure you guys got stories. But, uh, yeah, Disney will bust you. Which I totally do not agree with, by the way. It's like, I get it. Like, this is my character. Blackstone and Krem, right? This panel I'm doing. You draw them any which way you want. I don't care if you even make prints of these guys and sell it at the comic show. Now, the one thing I don't want you to do is say that they're your characters. No, I'd like you to say that goofy guy, Rob Marzullo, made them, you know. But I don't care if you make money. Well, I don't care. To me, that's like free advertising. I want you to do that. I want you to draw my characters and, and breathe new life into them and stuff like that. So I, I can't stand when they, they bust people for drawing the characters that they love in their own vision, their own representation. And I know people don't agree with, you know, there's lots of debate on this hot topic. But, uh, yeah, I'm, t I'm sorry. I don't, I don't buy it. It's, to me, you should be able to, as long as you're totally redrawing it. You know, there's a difference if, like, you're drawing it from, you know, something that, that they put out there as a product and, and you're just, again, you're not even recreating. You're just drawing that same thing. I feel like that's a little bit different. But, see, that's where, you know, that's where I don't have a leg to stand on because you can't have feelings uh, about, you know, this is right because I think it's right. This is wrong because I think it's wrong or I feel it's wrong. Yeah, that doesn't that doesn't play out. So I get it. Rules are rules. We just got to abide by them. But I'm just saying right now, I don't care if anybody draws my characters. Just don't, don't steal them. Take them and be like, this is my character. I made this awesomely weird character with an alien on his back. Because I'm going to show up at the show and I'm going to knock over your table. No, I'm just kidding. Just kidding. Wouldn't do that. I'm not a violent person. What will you do after you finish inking? Uh, after the inking process, that's when I go to adding the word balloons. And uh, I'm really thinking about doing an Indiegogo for this book. And so I want to get the entire book done. And I'm thinking about funding the book, but not for the work. You know, I mean, helping to fund the book, the production of it, and getting copies out there, everybody, all that jazz. But I'm also thinking about funding it to bring it to full color. I just think that would, that'd be like my next goal of this. Because I've, you know, I've always printed my stories in black and white. Um, I've never got to see one of my books in full color. I was always so happy to get the cover back from... The different books I worked on and they were color. I was just like, that was always like a really awesome moment for me to see the, you know, the color version of the cover. And but I never got to to this point. I haven't got to do a full color book. I mean, I guess my Learn to Draw Action Heroes book is somewhat full color. But that's a how to draw. It's not the same thing. Nintendo and Pokemon is really bad IP stuff. Yeah, I bet. I, I wasn't even thinking of the gaming aspects. I just think they need to allow people to create fan art. I, I really do. I think that, especially like if you're at a show and you're making your own version of these things. But I get it. They're buying it because like, all right, you draw. All right, I'll put it in this, this term. Like I share different pictures online, right? And it's hard for me to not want to draw Batman. Not only am I a huge Batman fan, you know, I got, I'm sitting in a Batman chair for God's sakes. So I really like Batman. But then um, also, every time I share a picture of Batman, it does way better. Well, I'm sorry, that, that shouldn't matter. <laughs> you shouldn't care about how many likes you get and what, what people... But, but you're an artist and you're trying to develop an audience and you're trying to make people happy. And you like when people like your work. So it all ties in together, you know. So... And I know that they're liking it out of a reaction to, hey, it's Batman. It's not necessarily, hey, that's really cool art. Sometimes it's both. But yeah, it is like shooting fish in a barrel a little bit because you're like, you're drawing off this 
iconic known commodity and entity and, and that's all copyright that's all their uh you know their um what do you call it not product but their commodity anyways their property you know but i think ultimately it, it hurts it hurts it because you know you got to let the fans love what they love and um yeah you should be able to draw whatever you want I, and i feel that way about anything i don't just feel that way about comics and fan art i i just think that you should as long as you draw it you should be able to draw whatever you want as long as it's not something that uh that hurts somebody you know like that's hurtful you know and definitely shouldn't do that but then again, you also should be able to, I mean, look at political cartoons. I mean, you can tear people up in a political cartoon and they're all for it. And that's where caricatures, I think, came from. If like you study like, you know, what what started caricatures. I want to say it was because back in the day, uh, you couldn't talk about a king or queen openly. Uh, you would be, you know, thrown into a chamber and beheaded, who knows. Uh, so they would make caricatures of them. To make fun of them and, and get their point across, you know, in a sense politically, and they would post those um, out to like, you know, get their message. Out. I think that, you know, don't quote me on that. I'm just telling you, I'm sharing my thoughts, right? So you need to like go and do the research. But, you know, that's kind of like one of your freedoms of expression. You should be able to draw and say what you want, you know, within reason. You don't want to hurt people. You know, you just want to be able to be like. Hey, I don't agree with this, or I think this is funny, or I think this is cool, and I want to I want to support it. But yeah, it's as soon as you get that little nasty thing called money involved, it all gets weird. Cause I, I I'm pretty sure I can give away anything I want. You know, I can draw anything for you and give it away. But it's not until I try to make a, a penny at it that I turn into a bad guy. Yeah, Lucasfilm was bad too. Yeah, I bet. Which is weird. You know, this, this is the other problem I have with all this. I know everybody is like, you know, all these ideas are so original and so so amazing. And I just, I, I get it, they are. But everything is a copy of a copy of a copy. It's a piece of another idea. You know, even Batman. What would Batman be? Um, is it, it's a... You know, Batman's a takeoff detective comics from the past. So he's basically like a Dylan Dog. I think Dylan Dog was before Batman. Maybe not. But anyways, picture, all right, detective comics. That's one aspect. And Batman's, what? He's Dracula, right? I mean, that's he's a he's a takeoff Dracula, I think. I guess that's my own opinion. I know Hulk is definitely a takeoff of Frankenstein. So I don't know. Certain ideas aren't as original as you think. Like even Star Wars. And I love Star Wars. I'm not trying to make anybody mad here, but what is it? It's a space opera. Uh, it's it's a western, right? I mean, they're they're lightsabers and and guns. It's kind of like a, you know, and they got the mix in of the the religious undertones and the government undertones. It's all just a mix of ideas that we already have seen. It just they they orchestrated it. Lucas orchestrated it in a way that made it something beautiful and amazing. Um, but I don't know that. I mean, what, what's original? The Force? The Jedis? I mean, I don't know. Everything's an idea from an idea from an idea. You know, it's all just different takes on things that we've been imagining and, and seeing in stories for a long, long time. Like here, here's a good uh, exercise. From your guys' perspective, what's the most original idea that you've ever seen? Be it a movie, comic, cartoon, what's the most original that you feel had no, uh, wasn't hinged upon anything else? I have a hard time thinking anything like that. Garfield, nice. From the gaming pickle, <laughs> he said. Garfield, a talking cat. Yeah, that's that's pretty original. Come on, you can do better than that. I think we all think our animals can talk in one way or another. Some better than others. 
Spider-Man. Yeah, well, you know, and somebody just asked, who's your favorite superhero? And I would say it is Spider-Man. And as far as, like, originality, let's see. Who, who would have been before Spidey that, that could have been an idea to pull from for that? Mm, I guess I would have a tough one to, to really explain that or, or think of something like that. Um... Give me a second here. There's got to be something. Anybody? What would you guys think is the the basis of the idea for for Spider-Man? That's a tough one. But, I, you know, I, it is one of my favorite characters, and I, I do love the character concept. You know, the thing I think I like most about Spider-Man is the fact that they tie in so many of the, you know, the fear and anxieties of a, of a teenage kid, you know, coming into having these powers and, and what that would do. Uh, I even like how when it initially starts, you know, he's trying to make money and trying to, like, get the girl by getting a car. You know, I don't know if that was just the movie adaption. I think that was always the case, right? Does the wrestling thing, you know, his uncle, you know, Ben and all that stuff. But, but essentially, I think that is a very neat spin on, I mean, superheroes in and of themselves. You know, what Stan Lee did is just, just very original in the idea that I think superheroes in and of themselves are the most original. I mean, you definitely had heroes of the past, everything from a knight to a uh, knight shining at armor and, you know, stuff like that, and, and cowboys, and westerns, before comics, and superheroes, it was westerns, right? So all of that is the basis of, you know, just showing heroes in a different light, but the superhero aspect that, uh, you know, Stan Lee and the other creators brought to light, yeah, I think that was probably the most original thing in a long, long time. Is it entirely original? Maybe not, but definitely the way they did it became something that was so different from anything uh, at the time, so much so that they were bad mouthed and, and people, you know, I remember, I remember even when I was a kid, you got knocked for reading comics. Like, you're just like, you're rotting your brain, kid, you know? <laughs> and now they now they don't mess with us so much since there's all these success surrounding it. But, um, but yeah, like, like I think that would have been one of the most original things in a long, long time. And I think that's why it was so successful. But yeah, nothing is entirely original. I agree with that. Yeah, it's like, even with this character, you know, I like to think it's somewhat of an original concept, but it's really not that original. Like, but I, you know, I'm not going to let that stop me from pushing my character and, and trying to get my uh, concept out there. But he's got an alien on his back. Well, what's that? A symbiote. What's How many symbiote characters are out there? A ton. And then I spun it a little different. He starts off as a bad guy. The alien's forcing him to be a hero. It's a little different, but it's not original. It's just a different spin on a series of ideas. Um, he has impenetrable black skin. Bullets just bounce off him, but they don't bounce off the alien. So he's got to be very careful. Like he's he's pretty tough, but he's also vulnerable because of this thing that's now attached to him. Again, not original. Just hopefully, a, ho hopefully, just different enough where people like it. Yeah, no, somebody's like Blue Beetle. I hear that all the time, and I never even followed or read Blue Beetle. Not once. That's messed up. Maybe I need to. Um, but yeah, but I've I've had this character compared to. Let's see, Blue Beetle, Silver Surfer, um, who's the other one? Uh, who's the Space Ninja? Who's that character? I can't remember his name. There's a Space Ninja that people, oh, is that, is that so-and-so the Space Ninja? You know, so it's going to happen, you know, and, and I mean, there's so many ideas out there now. I feel like it's really tough to be as original. You know, like, I'm, I think I might have had a shot back 50 years ago, but, uh, 
man, have you even like tried to Google names for your character? It's hard to even find a name that hasn't been taken. Like you have to give him, you know, like a, a first and last name, maybe a middle initial to to be original with names anymore. And I, I swear, I think those companies do that because if they, uh, you know, if they copyright all these names, even if their characters are never going to use again, they're a backup character in a, in a book somewhere, um, you know what I mean? They kind of have rights to it, right? I think that's what they're doing, but maybe not. I think you can use the same name as long as the character is like so much percentage different. 50% different or something like that. Because then there are characters out there with the same names from different uh, books. But then I, I bet like anything else, the more that character starts to become uh, financially successful, the more somebody else that might have the rights to that name are going to care. Maybe something to that extent. Because that's always the case. As soon as there's more money to be had, somebody's going to do the whole squeaky wheel gets the oil they're gonna start stepping up and trying to take it and look I'm, I'm zoomed in too far again it's funny how I seem to do that almost every time instinctively when I know I shouldn't should be way back here at least All right, what time are we at? I probably should eat some food at some point here. No character is completely different, whether they are humanoid and spider or both drawn with lead. I didn't get that last comment. I didn't understand it anyways. Well, then I think about this. What if you, what if you're not into comics, but you have this idea that you that you like, that you love, you want to put it out there, but you don't read them that much. You just you're creative. You like to draw, so you you know you see that people do this in comics, but you don't run out there and try to read every book and follow every animation and movie. I mean, it's it's daunting, right? It's a lot of stuff you'd have to consume to really know all these different characters. I definitely don't know them all. Uh, nowhere close. So what I'm saying is like, say you're not that type of person that's even interested in following all this other work, but you love to create your own book and your own character, but you make a character that's very resemblant of somebody else. I mean, I don't know. I guess it seems kind of wrong that you would fall into uh, being the bad guy in that legal situation when really you were just doing something that came from your creative brain. It just happened to be something too closely assimilated to uh, something there's a major IP on or what, however you word that, I don't know. So I, I guess that's the part I have a problem with it. Like, you know, you should just be able to create whoever, but, you know, but you, obviously you can't sit there and be like, you know, create another Superman and, uh, and get away with it. And, you know, it's got to be so different. I think it's a percentage thing. Isn't it 30%? But it couldn't have the same name. Or sound the sound close to the same. I don't know. It's weird though. But then I think you could run out and do a uh, a Frankenstein story, because I want to say Frankenstein is uh, public domain, right? Isn't that how it works? And you guys can feel free to tell me I'm way off because I, I really don't know if these are facts. I'm just kind of sharing here and reading the comments. Are there normally three muscles in the shoulder blades or is it just two muscles? It's three, right? Shoulder blade is... Uh, let's see, it goes like a Y. One, two, three. Isn't that something like this? And then one's bigger and one's a minor, major. 
I think it's something like this. I know there's a Y in there. And then your trapezius comes like this, goes around like this. And then, you know, you don't want to draw the whole shoulder blade like I did there. I just draw that shape to kind of pinpoint it. And then even these as the back flexes, these all kind of look different. A lot of times you'll just see a pocket of shadow, not connected lines as much. Something like that. I don't know. It looks weird, but I think backs look weird until you get the whole thing in there. You got to get the deltoid in there, the lat, trapezius. Yeah, it doesn't look right until you kind of shade them all against each other a little bit. But what is it? It's the Empress Pernatus, Terry's Minor, Terry's Major. So I think, don't quote me, look at your anatomy books. I think this is your Empress Pernatus and then Minor, Major, or vice versa. Well, the Minor is smaller, so it's <laughs> smaller, but I think there's three right there. Anywho, all right. Wasn't ready to try to show an anatomy lesson, so forgive me. Not to mention, that's probably the part of the body I'm the worst at. <laughs> Like, it's, uh, for me, the back is the worst part to try to get right of the character. But it makes sense. We draw that character the least, or that part of the character the least. Just reading these again. Oh, so Jason Martin's talking about the Frankenstein thing I mentioned. Uh, I think the bolt location uh, on the neck is what makes Frankenstein an issue. Uh, as long as you don't put the bolts on the right spot, he's fair game. I only heard that from a video though. Yeah, so I want to say certain certain things after they've been around for so long, they become public domain. And I thought it was things like certain versions of uh, Dracula, maybe not. Um, um, you know, Frankenstein, uh, Bigfoot. <laughs> I'm trying to think of anything that might be fair game. But, but I think it's kind of it's kind of weird in a way that that's okay because they've been around so long and they become public domain. You can do whatever you want, make your own stories of them. But then other ones, you just can't touch them because maybe I think they have to remain into, into print like from a certain company. So once that happens where they're, they're not, it becomes fair game. And I again, don't quote me on this. I'm no lawyer or nothing like that. There's, that's what's crazy. There's so much surrounding this stuff. It's hard to keep track of. But uh, yeah, I think they have to keep something in a, a longer run in print because, yeah, I mean, why would those be? Why would any of those be public domain when you think about it? I mean, you definitely couldn't do that with Spider-Man or Superman. And I want to say the death of Superman was some tactic for them to be careful of that. Like maybe because he was he was getting to a certain uh, duration. In the age of the character, wasn't that wasn't that something to do with the death of Superman? All right, another thing I got to create a brush for so I can move faster through this repetitive part. And shadows. I don't know why I do this. It's like blocking your shadows first, you big dummy. Because you can use these to not have to draw in all this detail. And again, like we see the shadow on that brick over there, I could really bring these shadows way into here. Probably make it look better anyways. Yeah, so shadows first. So you don't unnecessarily render things that you don't have to.
Sorry, this is my first day on the job. I'm new to all this. My favorite thing about inking though, digital inking especially, but any of it, but really digital inking, is you can just come back white out and really make some neat effects. So cool. I would say it was just digital inking, but I've been doing it even more with my traditional stuff. It just looks more interesting. You're better off kind of scribbling in some texture and then coming back with a little bit of a little bit of white out. It's really cool. Really fun. Me likey. Alright, need another sip of my butter coffee. really weird you wouldn't think butter in your coffee would be any good but it's it's kind of it's kind of unique death of superman was cuz of image comics yeah elaborate on that still traditional art i don't i don't know what that means why would it be because of image comics because they were trying to draw attention to the character, is that what you're saying? Because Image Comics was doing so well? Hmm. Interesting. Hey, how's the stream health? So I'm still kind of curious as to whether or not everything's coming through hunky dory. Sorry, I know when nobody says hunky dory anymore. That was maybe sound really old. Which really made me sound older than I am because I never said hunky dory. You notice that as you get older, you just start picking up older. You, you like start doing things that that you would have thought was funny as a kid, like you wouldn't have did as a kid, but you're older now, so you're like, well, that's what old people do, so I'm gonna say hunky dory now. Or <laughs> it's a bad example, but I mean, it's hunky dory. <laughs> Looking good, thanks. Stream is smooth here. Oh, sweet. Oh, it's hunky dory. The the stream health. Ah, gotcha. Nice. Touche. Uh, thanks, uh, gaming pickle. Love that name. Uh, how long did it take you to get this good at drawing? I, do you think I'm good? Well, thank you. I didn't know I was good yet. I was I was thought I was cl getting close. Uh, I've been drawing a long time since so I was fifteen, and I um. You know, I, I still see flaws in my work. I don't, I don't think you ever want to stop seeing flaws in your work because that means you quit growing. Um, but also, you don't want to compare yourself to people that you know you think are way better than you, and, and worry too much about why you don't draw certain things as well as them or whatever. You learn, and then you move forward, and then you learn some more, and you move forward some more. But yeah, thank you. I'm glad you think it's good. Um, like I said, I've been drawing since I was 15. Comics. I probably drew ever since I could pick up a pencil. But um, I started drawing comics when I was uh, about 15. And I took some real breaks, which I wish I wouldn't have. But I think overall I've been pretty consistent throughout my life. of always at least doodling. Always drawing something. I mean, shoot, I've been a caricature artist for parties. I um, I did 3D, which I didn't have a whole lot of drawing to it, but it's still I think it's still pulled from my knowledge on drawing and, and creating stuff. And uh, I did car graphics for years, signs and graphics, and a lot of car car related stuff. I mean, shoot, I even put vinyl on rims. Like I'd take big rims, and I would put these designs out of, out of vinyl and wrap it onto the chrome wheels. It looks so good, and it didn't it didn't uh, destroy the quality of the rim, you know. So you could peel it off later and do something else. Oh man, our shop was like hot for that. Like everybody loved it. We had rims always sitting around the shop and decking them out. So, that, you know, what I'm getting at is like I've always been a creative type. I've always made something. I've airbrushed, you know, vehicles and helmets, and did a motorcycle, and so I'm always like using my art. So I think it all ties together. I think it's better to put it all into one focus for sure. Like I should have always just stuck with comics. Looking back, that's one of the things I would have changed. But 
I did it for a reason at the time. I was, I was worried comics weren't going to make any flipping money. And I was like trying to have a, a job I know, knew that could provide for a family at some point. But I let that worry get in my way. That, that, uh, that fear basically. And, um, I don't think you guys have to fear that anymore. Like not as much, like there's so many ways to turn this stuff into a side hustle and then the main hustle that I think it's, I think everybody's good now, but back then it was, it was kind of freaky. I mean, plus I lived in a shop town in Flint where people were like, I can't tell you how many times people, including teachers were like, yeah, the, you better get a real job. Like you're not going to make no money doing that. <laughs> like I was just like distraught or destroyed you know like why would you say that to me you know but they just didn't have the vision for it because there's everything they knew was get a job at gm make six figures a year to work on a line have the best health care and uh and that's that was reality back then if you could get in there like they had uh what was it everybody would hand out like uh or they wouldn't hand them out but they would get like um ways to get their family in so first you could get family in maybe a friend and then it got harder and harder and then it stopped and then they restructured now it's i don't think it's like that anymore i don't think people even make i mean people still make good money in there but they don't make like what they used to i remember hearing stories where like the janitors were making over six figures and then putting in overtime and getting double time and yeah so when you when you're raising a town like that it was a little bit harder. Now, people were telling me, oh, you should be putting graphics on cars. And that's what led me to do all that. Because everybody had, it was a car town. Everybody loves their cars or rims or, you know, different stuff. So it was always like, hey, do that. And and I jumped into it. And it was it was good for the time. It was, it was a blast. But I did miss comics. I mean, I still did comics on the side. But, you know, when you do them on the side, it's harder. Because these things take... Well, for me, anyways, they take a while to complete. So I have to be very careful with what's on the front burner, what's on the back burner, you know, and uh, what's the side hustle, what's the main hustle. But yeah, so be careful where you put your focus, what you choose to make your, you know, what you're really putting in the forefront of your future, like what you're trying to make your future. Uh, if it's comics, that's great, but you've got to be consistent. you got to bang them out. Got to draw them every day, even if you don't feel like it. There's going to be days you don't feel like it. Or else, it's. It, I think it's kind of a, a hopeless pursuit if you don't do that. I mean, you can do it for fun, obviously, but um, it's going to be hard to really make a, a go of it if you're not really, really working hard at it. All right, just reading through some of these real quick. <clears throat> hmm. Is there any, any questions? Anything that I have to address? And feel free to post some of these twice too, because if the the stream will kind of move through and I miss some of them, so forgive me for that. I'm not trying to. One I saw was like, how do you shade like that? Do you mean the I'm doing the tentacles right now? Um, so I, I kind of mentioned some of it. So I start off with the shadow, right? Get the shadow in there. Light source is over here. And I'm not the greatest at this. I'll tell you what, uh, I always recommend David Finch. When you're trying to get better at shadows, look at David Finch's work. I mean, freaking shadow master. Sounds weird, but it's, it's, he's really good at shadows. Like that's somebody I've always used for educational and motivational for shading it's like it looks like it comes so easy to him um and i definitely feel like i'm better than i was a long time ago like i i would totally avoid putting shadows in my illustrations <laughs> because i just it's like my mind doesn't see him as well but then what happens is and you see i'm kind of pinballing around throwing shadows every which way you know it's it's spotty and so you got to be careful of that but when i'm rendering something like this i'll just start off with the shadow this is a tentacle, it's organic, so I can really play around with this. And when I start doing this part, I'll be honest, uh, I, I think of uh, Todd McFarlane's work. I always like, uh, well plus it's probably because I have a big picture of the lizard that he did on Spider-Man 4 hanging on the wall. So like, um, I like how he just kind of 
blobs ink in there and then breaks it up with thinner lines and it looks so cool and textural and and it's kind of fun and easy to do it like sometimes I'll sit here and overwork something and trying to make it crisp and clean and it, it totally kills it and it also takes longer so it's so weird a lot of this stuff is like figuring out a process and a pattern that is faster and um, yeah not overthinking it but yeah it's just kind of scribbling back and forth looking for like little bumps you can throw in like little dots here and there kind of look like uh, imperfections in the skin or whatever this tentacle thing is it's got some kind of alien skin but yeah just kind of scribble back and forth use a use a smaller brush again I'm not trying to zoom in but I'm hoping that anything that reads well anything that reads from this distance should read okay from here it you know and that's gonna be closer to the size of the panel like this and then up close here even if it doesn't read as well I shouldn't worry about that because nobody's gonna do that nobody's gonna zoom in that far so I need to be back here that's probably the hardest part for me that's probably why this stuff takes me too long but yeah just kind of scribble back and forth thick thin little bits of uh, little gaps and then also you got to rotate with the shape of the uh, the tentacle so for instance I don't want to just sit here and do this Look what that does to it, it kills it right uh, even if I did this if I keep going in a similar direction you see how it doesn't work so you have to like rotate around it you got to think about you know this going around this way so just think spherically and like you're texturing a cylinder and just remember too with textures it's so easy I just mentioned this but I'll say it again it's so easy to come back with white out and make this look even more detailed uh, another thing that McFarlane does like I like watching his Facebook videos and he uses a Cintiq like what I got and uh, and I would have never thought that he would have went digital but man he does it really well his digital inks look really cool I still like his old school traditional stuff that he did but you know he yeah he made the jump I thought so I thought it was pretty cool when somebody like him did it because a lot of the old school like 90s artists I don't think any of them are digital except him that I can think of yeah so there's a question for you guys uh, what 90s artists went digital the only one I can think of is McFarlane Let's see, the, uh, I'm trying to read through some of these. When I get quiet, just, just so you know, I'm trying to read. That's how I read. I get real quiet. Um, so, yeah, one of them by Spidey Con, Spidey Kane, Spidey Con. Yeah, my biggest crutch really is hands. Like the hands, I usually can't do the stuff for like position. I usually trace, but I try my best to not trace like other art. I try to use clip art. Yeah, so hands and feet are, are you know, they're hard for everybody you know um, and they they can be very stylized so one of the the artists that I look to for that that I think really does a great job with just quick expressive hands they're not they're not accurate but they're they work and that's uh, J Scott Campbell so he'll do hands where it's like I mean they're pretty bad sometimes and I don't mean bad I mean they're good they're just they're very expressive like he'll do stuff like this and don't get me wrong, I'm not J. Scott Campbell. I can't draw like him. But, you know, it's like this, right? There's a hand. I know it's hard to see right there. And then you got to race back the overlaps of the fingers. This finger's in front of that. This finger's in front of that. You know, but that's an expressive, quick hand. It's it's more gestural. He, he uses a lot of strong gestural uh, components on hands and really all through the body. But what I mean to say is that you should really focus on that. So don't sit there and try to draw a bunch of hand poses and make them all detailed. It's going to take you forever. Uh, instead, 
draw a bunch of cool hand poses. You can get those sheets off Pinterest that are like 50 different hand poses or 10 at a time, whatever. Get some different styles of hands, male, female, different people, different, you know, thicknesses of some people got fat fingers, some people got skinny fingers. Mess around with all that. But draw them gesturally and knock a bunch of them out. That is the way you get you get better faster. And then just remember too with hands, you can really use cylinders to um to help out. So for instance, even if I've got a hand pose, usually I'll I'll do it like this. Let me go to a different screen here. Usually I'll do it like this. I'll start off with the hand and I'll say, okay, there's this hand coming out towards us a little bit, right? So it's black rectangle is basically what it is. Okay. So it's that. And there's a little perspective there. So you widen the rectangle a little bit. Okay. And so then we know the fingers are basically like connected like this. They're not straight across. They're, there's an arch there. That's one thing. And then we know the middle finger is the most dominant, biggest, something like that. And then, so what's the hand pose look like? So you got to start thinking in your imagination, what, what do fingers do? Well, they can, they can spread out. A lot of times, two of them stick together, right? You see that a lot. Um, so you think about like the, the way that, that our fingers move. The thumb sits off to the side. So we'll start there kind of like that. And then maybe we bring uh, a lot of times I'll do the stick fig uh, stick figure stick finger type thing. Make sure to bend these so that they're not so straight. Like so, instead of getting the habit of drawing a finger like this, like this is the hand, this is the tip of the finger. Instead, you want to at least do one bend, okay? Because that's actually pretty common. The finger has another knuckle right there, but it generally is pretty common to have like one big noticeable bend. You can actually get away with that for a lot of hand poses. The thumb, you know, you're gonna see a, a definite back bend a lot of times. So you can use that for like a, a quick gestural hand pose. You know, and then you build on top of it and you create more form and volume and details and all that. But you gotta get the, the base kind of concept going first. But a lot of times, it's making the fingers look like they bend inward as well. So they're just not that straight, you know, so we tend to draw them really straight. Uh, if you want more realistic versions, you got to get more of that bend in there where they're kind of bending inward a little bit. The pinky kind of goes off on its own. The pointer finger, just like it sounds, you know, it's kind of directional. It points more than the rest, you know, so like that. I mean, no, it's not like a good illustration, but if you take this and redraw through it, so that's kind of how I would start it. And I'm drawn with ink, which I shouldn't be, but I'm just trying to make this fast so I can get back to what we're working on. So then I would get in here and try to shape it more and use like, you know, some of the wrinkles to the side of the hand. Remember the, the divide for the, the skin is like a webbing, right? It's, and then the knuckle is on top of that. And then you can use circles, ovals for the knuckles. Get, fingernails are great for kind of figuring out the uh, perspective of it a little bit. You know, it's like a perspective aid. Well, let's see. Remember the knuckles kind of go like this. So if you're looking at a hand straight on, Jim Lee's got a good video on this. And the, this is where I picked this up. The knuckles are actually a little more like this from like if you're looking at the back of the hand. Obviously we got our own hand but to look at, but if you just kind of remember this shape and the thumb attaches to the side of that. It's a it's a good way to kind of get it working. Okay, so just remember, yeah, just remember this base shape right there. And then, so yeah, so I'll bring this out. Again, these are just overlapping cylinders, ovals for the knuckles, fingernail, veins on the back of the, you know, the ridges, the tendons. You got veins that overlap the tendons. This finger is shorter than the middle finger. So there's you know, those relationships to pay attention to. And really the knuckles are all arced. Okay. So if, if you work up this way, the first set of knuckles are arced. Second set, they're, they're arcs. So just remember that. And that it's not so evident when the hand is at an angle like this, but it's still kind of there. 
it's good to remember that as well. And the pinky, that's going to get covered up more. And we could even kind of dip that down a little bit. And that might, you know, save us some time. <laughs> we don't have to draw it. It's always nice. Yeah, so anyways, this is, this is kind of my process for working through them. And then you add some shadowing and some detail and you just keep going. The you know, quick one for the back of the knuckles is just kind of zigzag the wrinkles. You know, I use this shape a lot, like a Z. I just zigzag that for the wrinkles of the knuckles, a little shading to the side. And you can make something that kind of looks like a knuckle. But anyways, that's my process for drawing fingers. And there's a, there's occasionally poses that I just can't do as well, and then that's when I look at reference and but really try to simplify it. Try to um, try to look at a bunch of them and draw draw them gesturally. Look past all the detail and just grab uh, just grab what you can. Basic shapes. Yeah, thanks, uh, Kresilozo Zanov. Man, I cannot say that. I'm so sorry, Kresil. A Zonova? 90. Um, saying you picked up the brushes and you appreciate the DeviantArt page. Thanks so much. I, I really appreciate that. Um, I love uh, I love making the stuff. So it's it's a win-win. You know, it's good for you guys, good for me. And I really appreciate the nice comments when you guys say stuff like that. It, it does let me know that I should keep going. Like I got a comment the other day and it, it was really amazing. And uh, I'm not going to shout out and do all that. But it, it was one of those ones where... You know, you, you kind of forget that your work means anything or that, that people, you know, maybe they just like the stuff, you know. And it went a bit further to say, like you're saying, how helpful it was. And it just made me feel like, it, it gave me like an overwhelming sense of like, work harder, dude. Do more. Like, people people are enjoying the content and I'm very lucky. And, uh, and I also want to inspire others to say, or for them to think like, hey, that's how it is nowadays. Like, you can really... Um, get your message, get your art, get whatever you're doing out to a lot more people than was ever possible. So these opportunities are for all of us, you know, like we can all put our thing out there and make a go of it a lot easier than it ever used to be. Um, but I think that's, what's really cool about, you know, there's a lot of craziness going on, a lot of backwards thinking, unfortunately in the, in the world. But one of the things that's really cool is that through this uh, internet social media stuff, which has a lot of negative possibilities, there's a few very powerful uh, positive things going on. And that is for us creative types and, and professionals of all kinds, teachers and online instructors, there's lots of different things that, have, that uh, could really utilize this stuff. It's, it's very empowering. And that's awesome. Like we got to take the good from stuff. We got to push the bad away, right? We got to take just the good about it. Social social media can be really destructive, obviously. Um, so we got to be very careful with it. Um, but it can also be very empowering to us and allow us to create an audience, develop an audience, and relationships all across the globe. I mean, it's just pretty, pretty freaking cool, I think. But. So we're, we're very lucky. I'm very lucky, and I thank you for that nice comment. It's awesome. But I do also feel we need to be very careful and respect it. Like There's a lot of stuff that can negatively be impacted by what we do as well. Yeah, and you're very welcome. Thanks for seeing you watch the videos. Truly appreciated. Yeah, so holy shades. That's funny too. Holy shades. Uh, I just I saw that you use ZBrush. What do you end up doing with those sculpts? Are they just uh, for fun? Are they for a job or something? Um, so yeah, I I just sculpt because I really I have some goals with sculpting. I don't know when or how that'll take place but essentially a few ideas that I have one of which is I would like to sculpt my own characters like these characters you see here 
Uh, I have sculpted them before, but not to the level that I'm happy with. I'll get there. Uh, so I, I usually sculpt, like recently I just did Spidey and Venom and, uh, and stuff like that. I use, I use fan art to, you know, have a, um, a way to gauge the level I'm at, try to improve. Uh, I do pretty much just do them for fun right now. But also, uh, I feel like it's, it's, it helps me to see more in a three-dimensional way so that I can emulate that when I'm illustrating. So I, I feel like it's one of those devices that I use to improve my art. Uh, but like I said, I do have some other things. I would like to eventually probably get a 3D printer and uh, print some characters would be fun. Maybe do some giveaways. I don't know. Something that, you know, kind of justifies having, having it, I guess. I don't want to just print stuff out and set it in my studio. But uh, I'd do some of that. Um, I'm just... I'm just a big fan of, of 3D. I always have been. Like I tell a lot of people, I used to work in 3D animation for a bit. And um, I made a few animations over the years. And um, I'm just a big fan of what can be done with it. And plus, you know, I am a gamer. I'm not as much of a gamer as I used to be. I just got to make time for drawing more. But uh, I love uh, some of these games and the intensity, you know, the intense things you can create and a lot of it starts with ZBrush so it's uh yeah just a personal pursuit to get better at 3d sculpting but I think it helps my art I always recommend it like I I recommend if you can't get ZBrush to just start with uh Sculptress Sculptress Pro and um all right wait you know what my bad I think they changed it to ZBrush Core so don't quote me on that check do your research but there was a free option called Sculptress. I think it's called Core now. Um, but that way you can at least get started as long as you got a system that can handle it. And then um, from there, just uh, if you felt like you needed more, or Blender, that's another good option. Totally free. And I've seen some amazing sculpts uh, and works of art come out of Blender. Very powerful, very capable software. Yeah, and then Hyperblast to set it. What about Blender? For sure. And it's free. I mean, amazing. It, it, it blows my mind that there's so many free softwares out there. And then it blows my mind that some of these softwares like, are just totally gouging people for monthly fees. <laughs> it's like, what is going on here? Who's going to win that tug of war? You know, Eventually they're all going to go free and people are going to... I guess donate and fund them. I mean, I imagine that's what happens. That's what you get a lot of guys on here do for me. I make a brush pack. I don't, I charge for some of them. Some of them I don't. And some of them that have been free, but kind of donations have worked out really well. So it's, it's kind of neat when you put that back into the hands of, you know, the people supporting the work, you know, it's, this is kind of awesome. Like you think you'd put something out there for free and nobody would chip in, you know. I guess, I guess it's how cynical I am or like how um, negative I think sometimes, but it's not the case. There's a lot of people out there like, oh wow, it did well for me. Here's you know, here's a few bucks. I'm gonna I'm gonna help support the project, and I want to say that's how they fund Blender. Yeah, holy shades of sand. Yeah, I use Blender myself, and it's become incredibly incredibly powerful it's insane yeah like i mean it has it has it has all the effects all the bells and whistles all you know amazing rendering like you I, I just remember back in the day like you had to have a pretty powerful software to even render something and then you know you would even use i, I mean to this day you still can use other render engines uh that you got to spend more money on you got to learn that and on and on it goes and really, I've seen some beautiful stuff just come out of Blender. So it's it's pretty neat. And I, there's a uh, interview with the, the developer, the main developer, the architect of it, engineer, developer, uh, programmer of it. And I, I've been meaning to watch it. It looks like it's an inspirational thing where he talks about why he made it open source and why it'll remain that way. Um, but yeah, I, I haven't watched the, you know, I keep saving these, these videos and then I got to watch them. But yeah, it looks like a good one.
So I think people like that, more, more people like that need to do that kind of thing. It really pushes, um, pushes technology further. It pushes, uh, it allows people to jump into something that they thought they otherwise might not be able to get, get into. So like Unreal Engine, they have um, their, um, what is it? Gaming, um, what would you call it? Gaming Rendering Engine? That's free. So there's that, that one by Unreal that's supposed to be uh, exceptionally powerful. Um, you can make full, you know, straight up, straight up powerful game, you know, amazing games with it. So the more they make this stuff free and open source, the more people can jump in together as a team and work on something. Uh, and it creates the next generation of, or it stimulates the next generation of creative professionals, which is fantastic. Without that barrier to entry, you know, saying that, oh, I have to, you know, pay this absorbent amount of money to have a copy of the software, you know, that really stops a lot of people from even getting into it. So there's that. Yeah, what's another one I'm trying to think of that's that's doing that same kind of thing? Oh, you know what was coming to mind? Elon Musk doing that with the uh, technology for... Uh, the railway trains or whatever you call them. And then the guy from Virgin Mobile, I think, picked it up, Richard Branson. But I think that's already been sold. But he made the technology free or open source or however you want to say that so that other people would jump in and make it happen. Like he was just saying, like, this needs to happen. These better modes of transportation need to happen. Uh, so instead of me trying to own it and, and do every bit of it, I'm just going to turn it over to everybody else to be able to utilize it. I think that's how it went. Again, always check the stuff I say and get your own take on it. But I think that's really powerful stuff. Like when people do that, it's 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 pretty cool. Like it's going to really push our our advancements in certain areas because they're not. You know, most people, I got a good idea and it's it's, it's got to be mine. You know, it's like you know me me me. It's got I got keep every penny from it and that's it's neat when people turn it over to uh allow others to jump in and be part of it they're not so worried about you know you can afford to not be worried about it i guess oh see that's cool holy shades just shared a quote from that guy i was talking about it made blender i don't care about money i just like making stuff tom uh tom is it tom or tom Rosendahl, uh, creator of Blender. That's fantastic, you know, and that's, you know, money's a byproduct of creating things anyways. That's what's so incredibly cool about it. You just keep making stuff, and I'm telling you, money will follow. Maybe not as much as you want, and that's why expectations are so dangerous. You gotta, you have to mind your expectations, especially as it pertains to money, but anything really. Like, you know, if you expect things, um... I mean, you can definitely work hard to get them. That's, I'm all for that. Uh, but you also have to just be happy with what you get because, you know, attaching expectations to everything, again, especially money, can really lead to depression and, and self, uh, you know, self-pity or something. You don't want to do that. Just, but yeah, but the fact that you create things generally will mean things are going to come back from that, right? There's, there's fruits of labor and, and creating things is a, is a really strong um, aspect of that. You, if you're creating things, I just feel like you're gonna, you know, things are gonna work out. But maybe that sounds a little too simplistic. You can't just create things, but you gotta have a game plan, gotta have a direction. But I like that quote though. Oh, I'm just checking my phone here for a second. I got a notification and it sounded like, or it looked like it was Comcast. And I'm thinking, man, I'm on a stream. Are they going to tell me I'm, you're getting close to your data. <laughs> like, who knows? Like, that's another form of control right there. Like, everything's all good. You know, get this high speed internet, blah, blah, blah. Oh, well, don't go over a certain amount of data because you get billed. I need to get the unlimited. But 
then again, do I really need that much data? It was like 1.2 terabytes. That's just crazy too. I've been in computers for a long time, utilizing computers for digital art and stuff like that. And to watch how big the files and the amount of data has gotten, it's just nuts. I mean, I'm old enough to remember floppy disks, you know? I know, that's old. But, I mean, I remember, th I remember three and a half, uh, what were they? They were 1.44 megs, I think, if I'm remembering that correctly. I'll have to Google that later. I remember the little the little hard disks, and those were those were uh, fancier than the floppies. They were the they were called three and a half floppies, but they they weren't floppy anymore, right? And it seems like they were one point four megs. Maybe not. Does anybody know? I'd be interested to know that one. That's pertinent information. Okay, so. Um, Sorry to repeat myself. No, you're good. I, I need you to do that because I can't, I, you know, I have a hard time reading all these and keeping up. Uh, but I want to ask, how long does it take you and you consider a good amount of time for making one comic book page? Um, well, let's see. The stream has been going on for, where's the time on this sucker? I want to say it's two and a half hours. Yeah, two, wait, hold on. Stream settings. Let me check this real quick. It's, it's got to be a couple hours. I don't see where it's at on here. But anyways, you know, I'm probably going to have total into this um, this page approximately, oh, God, um, 10, 15 hours. I mean, at least. I You know, some of these panels went faster. This was really easy to draw right there. This one I think I redrew a couple times. It's silly. This one was really easy to draw. I probably drew this hand panel with the Kirby Crackle. I don't know, 20 minutes. That's not, if that, probably 15 minutes. You see this one's taking a lot longer, but I also feel like this is more of an establishing shot to the page. So, okay, two and a half hours on the stream, gotcha. Um, so basically, what I'm getting at is some pages are gonna take more, some are gonna take less. I try to shoot for pencils and inks, 15 hours, 20 at the most, and that's ridiculous, it shouldn't be that long. I should be shooting for 15, I should be getting down to 10 hours for pencils and inks. So if you can knock out a page a day and you get the quality of work you like, then I think that's pretty good. You know, there's some pros that that's how they work. And then there's some pros, they can do two pages in a day, pencil and ink. You know, it's more rare, but it's they're out there. So it's up to you as far as what your expectations are. You know, what do you need to accomplish? Um, I find it to be a really weird kind of thing because I've talked to artists that are like, you know, hey, you know, you got to be really fast and you got to be able to draw anything in comics. True. You know, I, I definitely would say that's that's true. You got to you got to be able to draw whatever. And if you can't draw it as well as you think, then you have to figure out a way where you can utilize reference and get through it. OK, so the pro focusing on the process when you think you can't draw hands, feet, cars, whatever. You just got to figure out a good process for you that's time conducive to utilize reference. Okay, so there's that. Um, the other part is I've heard artists say, hey, you, it's so competitive. If you're trying to work for the big companies or what, you know, whatever, you have to just draw really good art. The, the speed will come later. So I've heard people say that as well. You know, it seems a little bit contradictory, but... Um, but I get it, like you don't want to get in this pursuit of the speed and then you're not putting out your very best work because, you know, if the work's not pretty amazing or, you know, you're not at least showing like the stuff that you're excited to draw because you're so focused on getting it done really fast, then it might not work as well as you hoped anyways. Um, although there's a lot to be said for just getting stuff done, you know, so... So I'm sorry, it's not an easy answer. It's a mixed bag. It's a tough thing to, to tell somebody. But I, I think that I would really just focus on what you're passionate to draw. And at the end of the day, it's got to be the, the quality that you that you love. Um, but you also, if, if time is more of a, a, a factor, 
And if you're working for somebody, it's going to be a factor. So you can't just be like, look, I want to draw this amazing artwork. Uh, but instead of one month, I need two to pump out the book. That's not going to work. But just remember, certain pages will go faster. I, I noticed too that I, I get faster the more I work on it. So if I sit here and I work on my Blackstone comic, uh, I'm going to get a feeling for, the, for everything the way that it's going. Now a problem with me is I start and stop a lot and I do other things. I make video courses, I make YouTube videos, uh, you know, I, I work on my house. I mean, I'm, I'm doing like a bunch of different things at any given time. And, but I notice that when I shut all that other stuff off, right? I don't even open up social media for a while. You know, I look, I look at like just this screen, just this page, it's gonna go a lot faster. And as I complete pages, chances are, they're just gonna get faster and faster. So, but again, that's being aware of your focus, being really aware of where you're putting your focus in. And that could be why you're not getting the speed that you want, because you're starting, you're stopping, you're, you know, you're moving over to other things. Uh, what I think you need to do is like, work really hard on some pages, uh, you know, see where you can cut back the time, certain things that you can maybe recycle in your art, or maybe you've found that when you can't draw something well, if you pick up your comic books and you sketch a few panels out of those books, you, something clicks. You know, you got to find out whatever works for you in that regard. Uh, and just remember, a lot of artists they pull some pretty crazy tricks to get stuff done. Uh, not everybody's super mega talented and, and draws everything from their brain. A lot of artists uh, they steal, you know, like but they change it, you know, like uh, I think we talked about this in the last live stream. Picasso's one of Picasso's sayings was uh, learn to steal like an artist or something, or, or what was it? Amateurs copy, artists, pro professionals steal, something to that degree. I mean, shoot, even back in the day, the, the old school Renaissance artists, they, they like, they had projectors and everything. They were just differently, uh, differently, different uh, designs. But I want to say they had created old school projectors to like, you know, make some of their work easier. I mean, a light table is a pretty amazing device. But if you feel guilty using it, then you're probably not going to use it and you're just going to uh, fight through every every panel, every page, and so you can tell everybody you're a real artist. You know, I don't know. Just different different strokes for different folks, different techniques to try. <laughs> Steal from everybody. Not everybody, but... <laughs> Thanks, uh, Griffin Des. Hey, Robert, still being insanely talented, I see. Yeah, glad you see that. I'm, I'm like looking at this panel and thinking I should redraw it. No, I'm kidding. I'm definitely not redrawing this one. I actually am pretty, pretty happy with this panel, to tell you the truth. I mean, I, is it perfect? No. No, maybe not. Does it need to be? Heck, no. Nah. I want any perfect panels in my book. Like, I, I like that one saying, I, I'm kind of on the fence about it, but it's a saying about life, and it's like, when, you know, when you're all said and done, you don't want to leave a body that's all perfect and pristine and in great quality. I want one that's used up, beat up, been through every imaginable scenario in life, and, you know, tons of fun kind of thing. It's a weird kind of thing, you know, I don't want to picture being in a box anyways, but, but the thing is, like, I think it is kind of neat to look at it like that, like... Quit trying to keep things so perfect and nice and like live, have some fun. And yeah, I, I don't want to leave this perfect, unscathed corpse. Sorry, I know it's negative, but I just thought it was a cool way to look at, you know, try to spin something that's otherwise pretty negative into a positive light. Man, I'm slow. Is anybody, anybody else watching that? Watching the video and thinking, this guy is really slow at doing comics. Anybody? 
I'm feeling that way. I gotta get faster. But not at the sake of too much quality. It's a, it's a balancing act, I think. You feel? Do you ever feel guilty using references? No, we we're just talking about that. Totally, do not feel guilty about that. I think that you know we we all got different needs for our references and our our artwork. Like I just look at it like this: the things that are really bad in your art are gonna stick out like a sore thumb, right? So if I can't draw this little, this is supposed to be a reflection on uh, water. I don't know, hopefully you guys know what I'm doing here. I think it reads well, but anyways, that's what it is, right? And if it's looking really bad and I'm sitting there, you know, you know that thing where you start tilting your head sideways and looking at your own art? You know, we've all been there. It's because you're trying to like almost reanalyze it and say, well, does it look okay? Does it look okay? No, you know darn well if it looks good or not. If it looks bad, then, you know, that's when you're going to pull some reference. And there's nothing wrong with that. You pull that reference enough times and redraw it. Don't trace it or trace it, then redraw it, whatever. But redraw it in your own style so that you're basically committing it to memory. It's just like when you take uh, a really tough class. What do you do? You take notes. You didn't invent those words, right? But you wrote them down over and over again until they stuck in your brain box. It's, it's art is the same thing. It's just shapes and forms, but it's just note taking, mental um, note taking, I think. And eventually you draw something enough and not only do you get it, it becomes uh, a lot easier. And then also once you really understand the shapes and the forms, you start being more creative with it. So you just get to where, um, what layer was on that right there? Um, you just get to where you understand the forms and then all of a sudden once you understand something you start to explore other ways to do it and again be more creative and inventive uh, with it but most of us get frustrated too quickly is really what it boils down to why can't I draw this I can draw you know I think a, a big problem is like when you become egotistical about your own art so for instance, you start drawing uh, things really well. Like say you draw really good women from a front pose, right? So yeah, I got that covered, man. Everybody loves the way I draw women at, from a front pose. I can do it like so well and you do it over and over again because you're, you're good at it. But then you go to draw something else like, you know, uh, people fighting and interacting or something, you know, fight scene from a hard angle and you just can't get it. And then all of a sudden you're like distraught because you've been like, telling yourself that you're so amazing and then you realize there's something you can't draw well that's where you got to stomach your frustration and just do it and do it over and over again um, because yeah you just kind of exploited you found an area of your work where you're not as good and that's gonna happen I mean it happens to me all the time maybe it happens to you maybe it doesn't like but uh but I think too you got to like train yourself to go well, hey that's a good thing I found the problem you know like if you start getting happy because you found something that you weren't good at and now you can really focus on it and do better, I mean, imagine if you can retrain your brain to think like that, you're going to get better a lot faster. You're going to start looking for those opportunities to stamp out your, you know, your weaker traits in your art game. Um, but I think that's, that's hard for people to do. It's easier to get frustrated. Oh, thanks, Dodo Bird. I like that little vote of confidence. I've seen other artists take many more hours on uh, on a page like this. I really appreciate that because that, that's one of my insecurities, as I've voiced a couple times during this live stream, is that, uh, yeah, I, I wish I was faster. But I, you know, I kind of live by the, the rule the rule of the turtle, the law of the turtle and the hare, that story anyways. Um, I'm all about trying to find some consistency and just stick with it. So I think when you try to be really fast, you can also burn out. So you got to be careful of that. Consistency is way better than, than just straight up being fast. Unless, of course, you're... 
a um, a sprinter, then you know, I guess that would be different. But or a running back, but but hey, just in in a lot of these these games, we're, we're in it for the long haul, you know. So we got to be we got to find consistency. We can't just be really fast and then burn out and then stop. That's not going to get us anywhere. So. But it is nice when you figure out little workarounds that make you uh, get the job done quicker. That's awesome. You got to do that. That's why I'm always so impressed with people that jump to inks really soon. Uh, pretty impressed with like Finch, the way he's done it. Uh, McFarlane, I watched an old, old video of his, um, which I don't even know if it was about his art, but it just happened to be that he had like some blue lines sitting on his table and he, he was inking it with a croquel and man you could you could see there was hardly any art on there i mean hardly any like reworked drawing and he was going right to inks so I'm, I'm always really impressed with that and i know that's what i have to do to bridge the gap i gotta quit tightening up the pencils so much um, especially with digital you know it's like there's so many ways to rework it um, but i'm one of those people where i really gotta I gotta see some aspects of the art, so I end up reworking the pencils a bit too much. So that's something I gotta I gotta do better on. That's my goal for the next few years is to really bridge that gap and just say, you know what? I can do this. I don't need to have every line spelled out. Just lay in some good sketches, some good energy, and then start inking. And there's parts I definitely can do that. And there's parts where I definitely can't. So that's where it throws me for a loop. Because I hit those roadblocks and I'm like, dang it. How are they doing this? Why can't I do it? But I've noticed it's things that are typically more concise and precise. Those are the ones I really struggle with doing that. If it's something like Venom, no problem. Monstrous character, lots of craziness going on. Usually isn't an issue. Oh, so Steve uh, Neeson, shouldn't the reflections go with the perspective line? Looks like a hole in the floor. Let's see. Now, when you say the reflect, oh yeah, you're talking about here. So the reflection should go with the perspective lines. The perspective of the scene would be like this. I oh, can't see that, can you? Like this. You're saying these lines should go with the perspective like this? It does kind of look like a hole in the floor now that you say that. Hmm. Interesting. Well, maybe I will change that. I don't know if I like them like that. But I get what you're saying. So I'll take it under advisement. And uh, yes, thank you for that suggestion. All right, time to drop in some fills. It's like my favorite part about digital, the fills are so quick. Another neat thing that's really helpful with Clip Studio. Now I could be using the perspective tools, but just this little shift click almost just as good I gotta make sure I'm filled in at the uh, top border yeah, and I'm kind of all over the place with these shadows but I'm just gonna fill all this in and then uh, if I gotta rework something I'll rework it but Tell you the truth, I could probably do this quicker if 
I could just do this with negative line drawing. So I'm going to add a layer right here. Let's see if I can speed this up a bit. And I'm going to grab everything from right here. Like that. I'm just going to fill that in. Turn back the opacity. And take the G pen, set it to transparency. And just do some shift clicks right through it. See if that works. One bad thing is I won't get the line weight that I want. So the one thing I kind of wish they did, and this they have this with uh, Procreate, but I don't think you can still do a shift click. Yeah, I guess you can. Um, but when you can control the line weight, so they need to make it where you could hold another key and you do, it'd be like the shift click, like point, point, and then you could control the line weight. Uh, Cause then this would be really fast or really effective, I think, but still pretty good and what you can do really i guess is just do the negative line weight and then come back and sculpt the line but you probably won't need to let's see here yeah let's just get these in And my kid is upstairs just losing his mind. Oh, well, he's having fun. I think we're all going to do a movie night tonight. It's kind of crazy because the uh, cinema has been closed around here for so long. So it'd be nice to actually get out and watch a movie. I think we're going to see Tom and Jerry. Anybody see Tom and Jerry? Was it any good? some of these. You guys are really bent up on those reflections, aren't you? I'll probably change them. Goodness. Calm down. I just told you everything doesn't have to be perfect in these comic books. <laughs> Asking for a friend. Anyone know where to start when you're learning anatomy full bodies? Um, I would say like... Um, Figure drawing is pretty important, you know, like just really taking the time to, um, and I don't know if I want that big white line there, um, taking the time to like draw just, you know, different figures in different time studies. I think that's real important. And then also, um, you know, grab an anatomy book that you like. Bridgman's a good one. But I, you know, I have a hard time telling people Bridgman off the back just because I've seen a lot of people, myself included, that at first didn't really know how to interpret his work. But I think once you realize that you want to you wanna interpret the work, not draw it exactly the way you see it, it it's really helpful for comic art. Just really, really helpful. Um, so there's that. And, um, you know, getting just a regular real anatomy book like a medical illustration breakdown but you got to be careful with those as well because they're really intense and and you don't need every bit of that um you just but i think they're helpful to look at you know, I, I like looking at them anyways uh, and trying to learn some of it and study it but i've heard other artists um you know david finch mentions it on his channel that um he doesn't think you need to know you know, all the muscles and all the terminology. Um, there's, there's certain ones you're going to draw a lot more from, you know, certain angles, certain poses. And then there's ones that you're just going to omit. You know, you're not really going to draw them. I, I think in comics it's kind of weird because there's a lot of times you draw, like, like for instance, the soloplex, you know, stomach and uh stomach muscles and the, the rib cage you draw it like every time even though they're sitting at rest they wouldn't you wouldn't see that you know but what do we do we draw it because we think it looks cool you know so there's there's stuff like that so in your own style you might need that or maybe your style isn't like that maybe you draw more realistic characters so in which case you know you're not gonna you're not gonna need to put all that in there um so there's that but 
Yeah, I think you just ultimately look around and then find what applies to you at the moment. Like I go through, um, I go through like stages where I'm trying to draw a, um, I'm trying to draw a character and all of a sudden I realize the legs just look funny, but I didn't see that a few weeks ago. You know what I mean? And so then I'm like, I'm like hell bent on getting better at legs for like the next two weeks to a month. So, so that's how I do it. And then all of a sudden it's, I'll figure something out. I'll find some you know, proper way to uh, learn the anatomy or the terminology or whatever, the shapes, and then I'll feel better about it. And then I'll move on to the next thing. All of a sudden eyes are bugging me. I'm like, so I really study eyes for a bit. You know, it's just, that's how I work anyways. Um, but yeah, you just gotta, gotta go for what you need at the moment, I think, and just keep knocking out the work. It's always going to be something though, especially as it pertains to anatomy. I don't think you ever get to a level where you're like, yep, I've totally mastered anatomy. I doubt that happens. And again, I'm zooming in too far. Anybody noticing a pattern here? All right. Well, folks, it's going on three hours. I can't believe I just did a live stream for three hours. But this is what we got. It took uh, a bit too long, but I think we covered a lot of different things. Uh, so that's good. You know, and I got some more done on the Blackstone comic, so I'm happy with that. Um... So yeah, if there's any final questions, I'll answer, um, and then uh, yeah, I'll bring you more of these. I'm I'm glad that the overall stream health stayed consistent this time. So apparently that was the problem. I needed a little bit better speed, and I also needed that hardline connection that we have now. So uh, yeah, so for future live streams will be good. But do me a favor, like if you're watching another video or uh, you know you're you're commenting on one of the social media posts, whatever. Let me know any good ideas that you want to see presented. Like, you know, if you want to see more of the comic panel stuff, I'm good with that. Uh, I need to do more of this book anyways. Um, whatever. But give me lots of good ideas, lots of food for thought. It, it really helps me to go into those future productions knowing what you guys want to see. All right, so I don't see any other questions. I will make sure to uh, see you guys in the reflections. I will fix the reflections, I promise. But I but I appreciate that uh, critique. Distorted wavy reflections would read better, probably. I got gotcha. you. Yeah, thanks, Tornado T. So thanks, everybody, for tuning in and watching today's live stream. I greatly appreciate it. Um, let me know uh, what else you want to see. And please like, share, subscribe, all that jazz if, if you're new here. Um, yeah, it's been awesome. I need some food. You're very welcome, and I was happy to do it. So thanks very much. Good luck with the art. More on the way very soon. As always, keep drawing, keep having fun, and bye for now.